Thanks, Lowell. All right, Coach Sarkeesian, it's game time. Who's starting that quarterback for you tonight? Uh, Hudson's going to go tonight. We're fired up for him. Thank you. And now coming off of last week's game against the Crimson Tide, an emotional one. Where is your team mentally as they get set to take the field against UTSA? Well, if the locker room's any indication, we're ready to go tonight. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Alex, thank you so much. That man is locked in. It's been pretty much under wraps this week, but it is going to be Hudson Card at quarterback. It is, and we're going to expect Hudson Card. Honestly, last week he had some really good throws. We talk about him not being maybe the same type of arm talent as Quinn Ewers, but what we saw, we saw a good brand of football, a gutsy brand of football. And so, we saw Hudson Card's going to start. We'll see how the ankle looks as the game begins. Meanwhile, Jeff Trailer has himself an electric quarterback in Frank Harris. What a job this man has done. Two seasons on the Texas staff under Charlie Strong. This is season number three in San Antonio. Took the Roadrunners to a 12 and two mark. Best season in program history. He was named the Conference USA Coach of the Year. They were ranked in the top 25 last season when Texas was not. They were, they had 11 straight wins. They even 12 straight wins to start the season. It all with that quarterback, Frank Harris. He set every single record you could imagine at UTSA. And they have three really, really good receivers who could play anywhere. This is a veteran football team. A lot of the players you're gonna see on this field have been with this coach and this program for three years. You hear this guy, three-year starter, three-year starter, three-year starter. But there are also some transfers who have come in and assimilated into this culture. They call it the 2-1-0 triangle of toughness. They want to be physical running the ball, the most physical defense, and then play their players on special teams. And Coach Trailer told us he would be shocked if this one isn't at least interesting. That brings us to the coin toss presented by Texas Lottery. UTSA wins the toss. They have decided to defer, so UTSA will kick and we'll get a really quick glance to see how healthy that ankle is for Hudson Carr. Meanwhile, a beautiful night here in Austin, Texas. A little toasty, but we're in Austin. We know that's gonna be par for the course, but the Texas fans have really showed up here tonight. And the UTSA fans have shown up as well. Oh, now, yeah. I, I heard a UTSA chant, a Roadrunners chant, earlier from my hotel in Austin. Everyone is ready for this game. This is a game that could put UTSA officially on the map. In Texas, on the other hand, they're trying to get back on the map. This is going to be a huge, huge game. I grew up in San Antonio. If you told me when I was growing up that UTSA would have a football team coming to DKR that believed they could take down the Longhorns, I would have told you, you are nuts. But it's reality. It's reality. We talked to Jeff Trailer earlier this week. He talked about, he said, I believe everything I say. Some of it you might think it's a miracle or impossible, but I believe it. Yes, Texas has good players. I understand that. But he looked at us in the eye and says, I like my guys too. And everyone in that locker room, they like their odds. And so this is going to be a great matchup. This UTSA team absolutely loves playing for Jeff Trailer, a high school legend here in the state of Texas. Three state titles in his hometown of Gilmer, Texas. Jared Sackett will kick it away. Roshan Johnson, Keelan Robinson, back deep for the Longhorns. Can Texas make the close loss mean something? We're about to find out. Robinson will let that go. And here comes Hudson Carr. He will start with the Texas offense at the 25. Steve Sarkeesian said it before the start of the season. At some point, we will need Hudson Card. They needed him against Alabama. He absolutely battled. And when he is not 100%, he's here for Texas, ready to go. And when you're in that locker room, you believe that. You feel that. I don't care if you're 100% or not. No one's 100%. But the way that Hudson battled last week, you saw that long run, that 19-yard run to get a first down against Alabama. That's what players in the locker room feel. They believe, even though he didn't win the starting spot initially, he is their starter now. Also a good sign for Texas. B. John Robinson gets the start in the backfield. He took some massive shots against Alabama. Looks good there, weaving his way through traffic. 
for about a five-yard gain. One thing to notice, you see number 92, Andre Carrick. He's former lineman. Now he's lining up a tight end. The coach has said, watch out for him on the edge. Watch out for these stretch runs. Texas showing some tempo here. Back to Robinson. Tripped up in the backfield, but in classic Robinson style, he keeps going. Trevor Harmonson, the standout linebacker, almost had a TFL. And here we are, third and short. More tempo for the Longhorns. Three straight carries. Initial contact is short of the line to gain, and this is going to be very, very close. You got to love the defensive line performance from UTSA. Remember last week they played Army, a team that loves to run the ball. Yeah. So I believe they're ready to stop the run tonight. And that looks like it is short. Fourth down, and Texas will go for it. Three straight carries for Bijan. Make it four straight. And on a second surge, that's good enough to move the chains for the first down. Who are we keying in on tonight? Well, one of them you just saw carry, carry the rock. Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson, we've seen it. Four straight runs for the first four plays. Going forward on fourth down and one from your own 35. Running the ball defensively. Lamont McDougal. They rotate a lot of guys. He's in there right now. He's from Pompano Beach, Florida. 5'10", kind of short, stocky, but it plays great football. And then Day Day Taylor, Dadrian Taylor. He's that nickel kind of outside linebacker. If he sets the edge, it's going to be a long day for Texas. Four straight carries for Bijan. Rosha now checks in. A little flip. Trying to get to the edge is Keelan Robinson. And for a guy that's not the biggest dude around, Robinson loves to dip those shoulder pads. He runs with his pads behind, really pads in front of him. He runs with a physical style. And so you look at him, he's not going full speed yet, but he wants contact. He seeks contact. Not the biggest dude, but he runs like it. Four pitch that will count as a completion for Hudson Carr. And her first flag of the evening. 76 offense five yard penalty first down and that's going to go against the sophomore left guard from katie hayden connor starting five from left to right kelvin banks hayden connor jake majors cole hudson and christian jones they played very well especially in pass protection against an outstanding alabama defense first and 15 jordan winnington in motion card his first chance to drop back taking a shot worthy one-on-one -on -one coverage does he bring it down no outstanding coverage by corey mayfield jr his pops was a standout at ou i'm sure he got a pep talk about this game one thing to look out for on the utsa side look for these numbers number two number one and number zero these guys that's the san antonio era code as we all know but these guys are the ones who earn the most votes for those numbers People care about those numbers. And Corey Mayfield Jr., he's one of those guys who's wearing one of these coveted numbers in the UTSA Roadrunners program. The standout for UTSA is Rashad Wisdom at safety, wearing zero right at the 50-yard line. Conference USA preseason defensive player of the year. Back to Robinson. He's hit immediately. And that defensive line for UTSA, they don't have the length that Bama does but there was some concerns from Kyle Flood. They have the technique. They may not be the biggest guys on the football field, but you watch these guys play, you see great technique, great pad level, guys hustling in the football. How important is this third and 15 this opening is, drive? It's gonna be, it's gonna tell us what the game plan is gonna be for Texas. You see a, a hobbled quarterback, you saw really five straight runs. That was a fake check with me and then a shot to Worthy again, one on one. Looked like he had an opportunity, but Mayfield running with Worthy every step of the way. That's a big stop for UTSA. That is, and I'm impressed, we heard it earlier, but I am very impressed by this UTSA defense. They are physical. This is what we saw when they played Army. This is what we saw when they played Houston in week one. They don't change. Jess Lepp says, the defensive coordinator, he says, hey, I'm gonna call my plays. These guys are the ones who are gonna be the ones to make them. And here comes Daniel Trejo on the punt. He was excellent against Bama, end over end. And this will roll into the end zone. That also looked like a UTSA team that was not phased with 100,000 people on hand at all. Not even close. I saw Day Day Taylor, number seven, Adrian Taylor from Shiner, Texas, before the game, get his team in the huddle and hype the guys up. This UTSA football team is unafraid, and we're seeing that in week one. And they trot out Mr. 210, Mr. San Antonio himself, Frank Harris. 
sixth year in this UTSA program. He leads America at 394.5 total yards per game. What he does extremely well is beat you with the off script plays with his legs. The lefty looking to the sideline and that is incomplete looking for JT Clark. He's got a trio of outstanding receivers. He does, and if I'm the UTSA offensive coordinator, I'm attacking the edges. I have three really good receivers. All three went over 750 yards last year. They could play anywhere. I'm getting the ball on the outside quickly because I know I have some backup offensive tackles playing. Oscar Cardenas, the big tight end in the slot, the bottom of the screen, and that's where the rock goes. Good move by the big fella. Oh, he trucked Anthony Cook as well. Cardenas was waiting for that moment. This dude is 6'4", 275. You think he's a blocking tight end, but he's not. He had a critical catch in week one that helped the team get back in. But he's a physical big body. He's almost like a bodyguard uh, for, 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 for his quarterback, for Frank Harris. And we've got a lineman down, and that is what UTSA cannot afford right now. They lost their starting right tackle, Makai Hart, on the second offensive drive of the season. And that is the left tackle, Finley Tatafu, getting checked out. Major concern, it was Demetrius Allen, not Tatafu, who suffered an injury on the previous play. And we're going to see what happened, and we know just how thin they are on the O-line. And you see the long arm by Ovia Gofu, but this is a big deal. Number 73 hadn't been started. Demetrius Allen, Allen was backing up. They had Frankie Martinez playing. Well, now Frankie Martinez is back in the game. Remember, he walked on. This is a walk on at right tackle. Big deal. Meanwhile, Harris and UTSA keep trying to plunge ahead. And that is Brendan Brady. A nice gain on first down. A senior from Cibolo Steel High School who almost hung it up. Actually did retire after last season. And Harris had to beg him to come back. And he is the lead running back for UTSA. Did Sorrell jump? I believe so. To the right side, Watts in coverage as that one was going for Zakari Franklin, but they should be offsides on Baron Sorrell. Offside, zero, defense. It's a five yard penalty. Replay second down. So that goes on to Marvion Overshell. Who are you watching with this matchup? I'm watching the guys that they're throwing it to. It's number one, it's JT Clark at receiver, 6'3", 220. And then number four, Zachary Franklin. He's probably their best playmaker on offense defensively. The guys who are defending him, Ryan Watts, who just defended that pass at corner. He's 6'3", as well. Matchup, Anthony Cook at safety. The right snap, and that is a TFL. The Texas defense there, Jalen Ford. He was the defensive player of the game against Alabama and makes the stop there. Big third down coming. Bottom of the screen. Deshaun Jamison left the game after the dropped interception early against Alabama. That's Jameer Johnson, number 31 at cornerback. As we have a clock issue, we're trying to figure out. you're game planning and you're UTSA, you're saying Deshaun Jamison is out. I already like my receivers. I already like my matchup. I might be attacking 31 right here. You see the stack formation. No one's going to be able to jam JT Clark. Tight formation here. It's getting loud on third and four for Frank Harris. Brady in motion, wide open, Cardenas breaks through the tackle from Ryan Watts, and it is another UTSA first down. The big fella at tight end taking it upon himself to do the work. Interestingly enough, he only had 16 catches last year, but when they need a big play, you think they're going to the big guys? They're going to the big guy. They're going to Cardenas, number nine, the 275-pound tight end. That is the most iconic catch in program history to win the Conference USA title a season ago. 
Not too much room to work against the stout interior for Texas. Jade Barron, Baron Sorrell on hand to make the stop. One yard gain. Notice the muddle huddle by UTSA. They don't really get in the huddle. They kind of get on the line. That keeps Texas from substituting players. You have to stay in the same personnel. Empty for Harris. We have yet to see him take off. Feels the pressure. Here he goes. Slips through one tackle. A second in a spin. Jared Thompson put a thud on him, but not until it was too much from Harris. First down, this UTSA. Is, this is what Frank Harris does extremely well. He leads the team in rushing yards. He's great with his feet. He has great vision. Not the biggest guy, only six feet tall, but this guy has the, the heart of a champion. Joshua Cephas in motion. Pressure. Flag down, but Cephas is wide open. Cephas to the end zone. And UTSA pending the flag is on the board first. A flag is down at the 46-yard line. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players going in motion and not getting set. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Wow. That erases six. Think about the turn of momentum here, Sam. Well, think about the confidence boost. I get it that it erases six. You see the legal shift right there. You got to get reset with a shift like that. But, man, if I'm UTSA, sure. I believe Black in down, my receivers. I believe in Cephas going up. against your best guy. I'm going back to that play. Maybe not right now, but if you can pump and go and your line can protect, go right back to it. Brady up the middle. Barron is there. You talk about guys who were excellent against Alabama. John Day Barron. All over the field, so many bright spots in the interior of the defensive line. Sweat, Colburn, Murphy, they gave Alabama fits, but right now UTSA having minimal issues working into Texas territory. Gavin Sharp in motion. Harris with a lot of time, dumps it down to Brady. Brady's got a good angle, and Brady will take it to about the 40-yard line. This will set up the third and manageable. Lowell, this is the ninth play. That was the ninth play of the drive. This is going to be play number 10. Still no huddles. You just saw a substitution. Now Texas can substitute. But if Frank Harris can have this kind of time, as an offensive coordinator, oh, I yeah. am licking my chops. The tackles gave up four sacks and 20 pressures over the last two weeks. So far, no sacks, no pressure. And this is four down territory as well. Third and four. Harris to Franklin. Franklin's got the first down. UTSA is not phased at all. UTSA isn't phased, and, and part of the reason why is number four, is Zakari Franklin. See here, if it's third and short, you have to play tighter, right? You have to play tighter. We see 13 right there is playing a little bit off the ball. That's called football awareness. Okay, it's third and short. I'm going to play a little bit more towards the sticks because I understand formationally they run slants on third and three. So it looks like Demetrius Allen returned to the game, went down again, and now is holding at his right knee. And for an offensive line that honestly has been atrocious through two games, we did not see this start coming. We did, and of course you hope that Demetrius Allen is okay. But one thing that I noticed when Allen went out and, and Martinez came in, there was what, what we call seven-man protection. And so here's we're gonna see the injury here. It was on, looked like a non-contact injury. I don't want to speculate, but we saw a tight end and a back go out and help out number 68. And so that limits what you can do offensively, but so far, UTSA's game plan is going as as they would have hoped. Well, you know who the co-OC is. Matt Maddox, former offensive line coach for Deontay Foreman's Don't Walker Award winning season. He's helping dial it up the right calls. Brady again, a fantastic positive game on first down. 
and Brendan Brady. Remember, the storyline was UTSA relying on Harris and the receivers, but not being able to get the running game going. They haven't all season long. I get it, it's only been two games so far, but they haven't been able to establish the run. The coaches talked about some of these passes to the sideline being an extension of the run game. If you can get five yards on an inside zone, you don't need outside passes. You've got a run game. We're just looking at, that was Will Stein, the offensive coordinator, as Harris keeps it. And Harris will be dangerously close to the sticks right at the 20-yard line. Stein is a guy, though, that also knows this University of Texas program. He was a quality control coach under Strong and Herman before leaving for Lake Travis, where he was Hudson Card's offensive coordinator. Here we go, another third down. UTSA two for two on this drive. Empty for Harris. Cardenas under center, big boy, plowing forward. And this is gonna be another close play, but it could be the third first down for Oscar Cardenas on the opening drive. And what it is, it's the 13th play of the drive. You think about it, it's hot out here. Defenses get tired, they haven't really subbed. They've stayed in this muddle huddle. Cardenas, the leader of this team, and I get it, he's not, he's not Frank Harris, the quarterback, but he's the quiet leader, the soft-spoken leader of the team. He's the, he's the workhorse, he does the dirty work. Hey, nothing like watching a 285 pounder run offensive plays in a single digit. Back to Brady. And Brady just thundering runs. Getting something. Three yards on first down. Before Ovia Gofu stops him. Sooner or later, Lowell, as a defense, no matter what side of the, the ball you're on, as a defense, you have to say enough is enough. No more three-yard gains, five-yard gains. But how do you do that? Okay, you focus on your technique. You focus on your hand placement. You focus on the knockback. But sooner or later, you have to stop it. Stop the bleeding. Four receiver formation to the right side. Harris feels the pressure. The lefty almost squirted it through. Alfred Collins is there to make the stop. One thing you'll notice, you'll notice Deshaun Jamison in the backfield. Last week, we saw a lot of these corner blitzes against Alabama. This defense has been pressuring a lot more this year, 36% this year versus 25% last year, trying to force the offense into negative plays. 15 plays, 65 yards, over six minutes on this drive. Texas is looking to limit this to a field goal. Harris to the right side, almost dropped. Franklin holds on to it, and Franklin is going to be very close to the first down marker, and the signal is move the chains. So Zakari Franklin on this play, he should be stopped, but one thing that he works on in practice all week long, every one of these receivers is as soon as you catch the ball, moving, finding a way to avoid a tackle. Sometimes in practice, guys will catch it and stop. They don't do that. They work on this yard after catch opportunities. Will Stein said he's not the fastest, but he's greasy. He's and greasy. we saw some of that right there. Not sure I want to be called greasy, but in this situation, <laughs> call me greasy, baby. Red zone for UTSA. Brady showing patience. Stood up. Shy of the five-yard line. DeMarvion Overshone with the tackle. This is a huge red zone trip for UTSA. This was not the start that Texas was expecting. Six first downs so far on this drive. It's been over six minutes on this drive. Seven minutes now. Got to check my clock. And that was Matt Maddox, the former Texas offensive line coach, co-OC of the Roadrunners. Second and goal from the six. Two tight ends and a running back at the top of your screen. Over the middle, big stop by Anthony Cook. Cook just saved a touchdown. Cephas was almost in the end zone for the second time. When you're in the red zone, everything happens much, much faster. Usually you might line up four yards off. Now you gotta line up three or two. Great tackle, that's a touchdown saving tackle, but the touchdown saving tackle doesn't matter if you don't keep the offense out of the end zone on this play. A bruised and battered. UTSA offensive line going up 
against the Texas defensive front that looked like a juggernaut a week ago. Third and goal. Harris, quick pass. Almost picked off by Deshaun Jamison. Welcome back to action. What do you do, Low? Do you go for it? You've had this long drive. You're matriculating the ball down the field. Great play by Jamison. Interesting to see. Third and short, you're passing it outside. But now you've got a fourth and two. You've driven the ball. It looks like they're keeping their offense on the field. 20th play of this drive. UTSA with an outstanding field goal kicker, but Jeff Trailer did not come here to kick field goals. Again, four receiver bunch on the right side. Empty for Harris, and there's movement and flags. This could change the math here for Trailer. Five yard penalty, fourth down. And it will. So the false start will bring out Jared Sackett for the short field goal attempt. Jared Sackett, freshman All-American at UTSA in 2017, transfers, comes back, and made some big kicks in week one against Houston. 24 yards for Jared Sackett to get UTSA on the board first. Up and good. The Roadrunners have come to Austin, Texas and made their mark. Three, nothing, UTSA. Texas football on Longhorn Network is presented by your South Texas Ford dealers, proud truck provider for Bevo, and in part by Bud Light. It's for the fans and air gas. Gases, welding, safety products, and fog provider every time the Longhorns take the field. For the past decade, folks here at Austin, Texas have been looking for hope, looking for that performance that will turn this thing around. It has not happened. These are the marquee games. Close wins, close losses against really good teams, including the national champs in 2019, that we viewed as the potential turning point. However, Texas has not been able to follow up with meaningful performances to actually make it a turnaround type performance. Consistently good to be great. It's easy to get up for the big games. Yes. What happens when there's a game that you're supposed to win if you're, if you're a Texas fan? On the other end of it, consistency from UTSA. 12 and two last year was no fluke. They're out here to show that we are for real. And Steve Sarkeesian even called this the classic trap game. Played well against number one. Now you've got UTSA, a team that is trying for the biggest win in program history. Over the head of Robinson. Hudson Card of the Texas offense will take over at the 25 when we return. How will Texas respond after watching UTSA with a 20-play drive that ended up with a field goal. Second offensive drive for Hudson Card. I don't want to call it necessarily too conservative. And the first one, four straight carries to Bijan Robinson. There were two downfield shots to Xavier Worthy, but fantastic coverage by Corey Mayfield. Bijan, the running back, to the right side, and there's the first downfield completion. Xavier Worthy to the 45-yard line. Smart play call. You saw Mayfield. You saw Mayfield bail out early. He understands that Xavier Worthy is a deep play threat. Well, Texas understands that too. That's why you see that deep curl seems so wide open. And that has been the go-to man when Hudson Card is in that quarterback. Bijan Robinson and Xavier Worthy have been his most frequent targets. That goes back to the start of last season. Bijan, this is what he does. Slips one tackle, make it to the third. Not so fast. Good stop by Mayfield. Let's check in with Alex. Jean says the big difference from last year's team to this year's team is how they would respond and bounce back. Big question this week, how would they respond after the Bama game? He says this new Texas team has no letdowns. 
That is Bijan to the 50. And it's really, it's one thing to say that, as we all know, Sam. You got to back it up. You got to back that it up. You got to back it up. You got to live it out. A 20 play drive. I'm not sure how many times that's happened in college football, but I do know as a defender, you get tired. This team has been running the ball on a six first down. We need our offense to hit, but maybe it's not a 20 play drive. Give me 15, give me 10, give me something on the offense on this third down. Third and three. Rojan Johnson in at running back, first down yardage, but there was a flag on the play. Offside, number 40, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined, the result of the play is a first down. Side so decline, give Roshan Johnson the yardage. They call Jamori Robertson in the red in the neutral zone on that one. Texas now breaking the 50. Roshan Johnson gets out of the tackle. A surefire tackle for loss. Johnson still up to the 40, and that is fantastic just to get back to the line of scrimmage and pick up some yards. Corey Mayfield and Trevor Harmonson are the guys. Harmonson has them. That's nearly back to the 50, but Roshan Johnson is able to keep fighting. Corn with time, taking a deep shot. Worthy is open. Does he make the catch? No. Slightly underthrown, looking at Xavier Worthy. You go back to the beginning of the game against Alabama when Quinn Ewers took a shot to Worthy, had it in his hands, and dropped it. Would have been an incredibly tough catch for Worthy to make. Moving back to his inside. And the official signaling. Looking at the clock, and they have reset the play clock, and it's a third and six for the Longhorns. And there is a jump on the right side by Nick Booker Brown. Going to see a lot of guys play for this UTSA defensive line. When they are healthy, defensive coordinator just left, says they'll Offside. play 11. Defense, number 40. A five-yard penalty, third down. So the UTSA defense getting a little jumpy. And that will help the cause here for Texas. Nine carries, 30 yards for the Longhorns. And this will be a timeout for the Roadrunners. They want to talk this over on third and one. Mo Galindo up here in the booth. My guy Sam Acho is making his way down to the field because one of the biggest honors in his playing career, academic career, happened last night and will be celebrated between the quarters. Sam Acho, one of 11 new members into the Texas Athletics Hall of Honor. Highest mark of distinction bestowed by the Texas Athletic Department. It obviously means so much to Sam. Won the Campbell back in 2010. That's the academic Heisman. And if you spend any time around Sam at all, you know he is special as a person, philanthropist. And we saw what he did absolutely dominating on the gridiron great career here at Texas and a good one in the NFL as well third and one to Robinson he's held up he will not fight through this time Christian Clayton got the initial stop and put the thud on B. John Robinson the Texas run game just has not been able to get forward momentum and we see Clayton coming from the middle of the screen, getting past Hayden Connor. Texas will go for it here. 
would be a long field goal for Burt Auburn. Fourth and four, and UTSA makes the mistake again. Mayfield Offside, was coming on the blitz. Defense. This five-yard penalty results in a first down. Wow, an offsides call to make it third and manageable. A tackle for loss, and then Mayfield jumps, and all Christian Jones has to do is tap him and say, we got the first down. Texas inching closer to the red zone, where they struggled last week. A toss to Whittington. He's got Sanders to lead block. Good run by Jordan Whittington. Brought down by Clifford Chapman. That's gonna be a first down for the Longhorns. So Whittington coming in motion. The forward flip. Casey Kane, Katavion Sanders. Trying to clear the way for Jay Witt to get the first down. 11 yards on the carry. And a whistle with five seconds on the clock. So this is the type of response that Texas was looking for after that 20-play, 74-yard drive. Was it the drive that Texas wanted to allow to start off the game? Just trying to take some momentum by holding the Roadrunners to a field goal. So Texas shut out in the first quarter. Only their second offensive possession. Looked like UTSA would try to get them off the field, but an offside call puts Texas in scoring territory. Roadrunners with the lead after one, three, nothing. Awesome to see Sam Acho being honored as one of the newest members of the Texas Athletics Hall of Honor. A great class. Kevin Durant, I believe he's on hand today, but he's been in town for the past couple of weeks. He was at the game last week at the ceremony last night. Shed a tear with emotion on what this honor means. And there's Sam. He brought two jackets, one for the broadcast, one for the honor. What he did. Passes broken up by Nick Troy Fortune, but a flag down. So Texas shut out in the first quarter by a group of five opponent for the first time since 2010 against Rice. A big part of that, UTSA playing ball control. Holding number zero, the offense. The 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Wow, so Texas gets to the 20, gets to the red zone, and then has to move back because of holding on Jatavion Sanders. Five red zone trips against Alabama. 16 total points, three field goals, and a touchdown. That was ultimately the difference in the game. Now it's a first and 20 for Hudson Carr. Card quick pass, one-handed catch by Roshan. Johnson has room, lowering the shoulder, and very close to getting all of that yardage back and then some. It's gonna set up a second and short. Look at Roshan Johnson. That didn't even bobble. That's stick him right there. Roshan Johnson showing the hands. Texas quick to the line after that 19-yard reception. Jatavion Sanders off the field, Casey Kane on. Robinson and Johnson flanking Hudson Carr. Card rolling out to Roshan Johnson. He's got the first down. Roshan Johnson has the touchdown. Texas with the response. Amanda Kyle Flood calls the conscious of the Texas offense. He told us yesterday, yeah, I miss playing quarterback. I still do think about it. But this man, oh, showing the sweet feet on the touchdown grab. That's his future. 
It's the present, it's the future in the league as well. And Texas comes back with a 10 play, 75 yard touchdown drop. Bird Auburn for the extra point, and it is good. Roshan Johnson. Meant for games like this, when he's got to carry the load, he's more than willing to do that. What a two headed monster from Texas in the backfield. Welcome back to LHN Football, presented by South Texas Ford Dealers. Texas leading UTSA 7-3. Sam had a big moment here. Sam had a huge moment on the field, but I gotta say, Sam, that was a little bit of a maniacho moment, okay? <laughs> you brought a jacket for the game and a jacket for the field. And now I'm not wearing any jacket because <laughs> it's too hot up here. <laughs> oh, man, shout out to Manny Acho. He'll be in the Hall of Honor before we know it. Hey, but congratulations. I know that means so much to you. No, thank you. Yeah, it's a big deal. Thinking about the little things that, that are done well, that make big things happen. We've heard it a couple. The 35 yard line. First down, Texas. Heard it a couple times. That's a little thing right here. They get a score, then a kickoff out of bounds. You give UTSA good field position. Ultimately, I've heard a coach also say this saying, death by inches. Yeah. These three yard runs, five yard runs, seven yard runs, this kick out of bounds, this penalty here or there, those are the things that hurt you. Well, think about it. You've got Texas fourth and four, and an offsides call moves the chains, and you give up a touchdown. Those are the things you cannot do if you are the underdog. Which, by the way, Jeff Trailer says, our guys we don't even realize we're the underdog. And this is another solid run by Brady. Texas is really having some issues. That quite frankly, they did not have last week against Alabama against the run. Harris going quick. A lefty to the sideline. JT Clark makes the catch. Now, Harris has the most prolific, prolific trio of receivers in college football. The career numbers are amazing. Yes. More than 5,000 yards for and, the big three. And that each one of these guys last year went, had over 750 yards. One of them, Franklin, had 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. All these guys can play. And they all complement each other so well. Sorrell trying to get the edge. Harris taking off. Harris, the first down tripped up. Jalen Ford prevented further damage, but now the legs are a factor. They are, and part of the reason they're a factor is because this is man-to-man -man defense, and in man-to-man -man defense, defenders, when they're running with their guys, they have their backs turned. Well, Frank Harris sees that. He also sees what people call that honey hole in the B-gap. The left end goes upfield, the right tackle on the inside leaves a hole, wide open green grass. Harris, electric in so many ways. A pass, and that is Cephas. UTSA inches closer to the red zone. After that first drive bowl, Jeff Trailer most likely came to his guys on the sideline and said, hey, this is what they got. This is who we are. We can match up. Let's run our plays and do what we need to do. Well, UTSA has been bold all week. We'll get into that coming up and showing that they can back it up. Another Time to Cephas. That's going to be just shy of the first down. Anthony Cook with the tackle. He's letting it fly. This was not his strong suit. He was not a good passer to begin his career. He's gotten better. He's gotten better. And that's what they call a hot. So you see the blitz. Frank Harris, smart quarterback. He says, okay, I'm going to throw the ball right to where you blitz because no one's going to be there. Will Stein, offensive coordinator. They saw the pressure that Texas brought last week. They have counters, punch, counter, punch, punch, counter, punch. That's what Jeff Trailer told us in the meeting. Stein compared Cephas to little Jordan Humphrey for his toughness and versatility in the slot. Brady nowhere to go. Nice stand by Texas as Byron Murphy with the stop. He was eating up double teams left and right last week against Alabama. UTSA set off for a third and short. Got a little longer than the sophomore from DeSoto. They say third down, money down. In practice, you have a specific day and period set aside for third downs. This is a third and two or less. Pistol formation. 
Back to Brady. Slips through a tackle, lowers the shoulder to the 10 yard line. Brendan Brady, it's been a one man wrecking crew. We've not seen that balance with Traylon Smith. It's all five. And so far this season, this has been the best quarter and some change that UTSA has had running the football. They could not run it against Army. They could not run it against Houston. Well, they are running it effectively against Texas. Kavorian Barnes checks in at running back. No catches or carry. Everybody splits out. Wide open for Harris. Four-man rush. And the defense there by the man just got a new number. Damonte Tucker Dorsey going from two to three. Yeah, he knew what play was coming. When he's sitting on the route, that goes back to film review. If you sit on the route, you're sitting inside, you know what play is coming. Sometimes it's no secret or no surprise. First and 10, you see this formation empty. You believe slants, play what you see. Justice Finkley, the freshman from Alabama, checks in. Barnes stays at running back. See if this to the top of the screen. Two Barnes, his first carry. And he ain't going anywhere. That's what Steve Sarkeesian calls populating the football. Populating the football. That's one thing that Steve Sarkeesian talked about last week that he was impressed by, the way that this defense ran to the ball. It's okay to miss a tackle as long as you got guys coming and humming with you. Third and nine. Harris to Franklin, flag on the play. Watts says, I broke it up. But the officials think otherwise. Pass interference, number six, defense. The ball will be placed at the two yard line, automatic first down. Huge penalty. Huge penalty, and if you're a DB, you have to, get your, you have to play the ball. You can't play the man, you can't play through the man play the ball and so we look at it. you play through the ball but you have both hands on the defender you need to turn around and try and get an interception or not have your hands excuse me on Franklin on the on the wide receiver and Texas fans are going wait a second that was a no call last <laughs> week <laughs> yes this is true this is very true different crew first and goal from the two Cardenas lead blocker to Brady Brady is into the end zone and the Roadrunners with their first touchdown here in Austin. Jeff Trailer told us, I like my matchup and I like my guys. UTSA. This, I'm surprised. And, and part of the reason I'm surprised is that they hadn't been able to run the ball on anybody. For, and this has been one of their pillars. It's interesting to see Jeff Trailer stick to his pillars, stick to his guns. I'm going to keep on running. Brendan Brady wasn't touched. He walked into the end zone. UTSA has to be smiling right now. Goes back to one of those pillars you talk about running the football. Oh, this is as good of a start as the Roadrunners could have hoped for. And let's keep this real. I mean, this team is very close to being 2-0. and An overtime loss against a top 25 opponent at the time to begin the season against Houston. They won 12 games a season ago. Ranked number 15 nationally. They're saying this ain't a surprise at all. This is what we do. So this is something that UTSA does weekly on social media. They go to the opposing campus. They announce the uniform combination for the game. They roll this out. And Texas fans are saying, just wait. Just wait what's going to happen to you. Steve Sarkeesian told us, he saw the video and said, thank God. Now I've got something to use as even more motivation coming off a tough loss against Alabama. But Jeff Trailer, he knows what he's doing too. This team ain't backing down from anything. Well, it wasn't just Texas fans, Lowell. It was Texas players. A lot of those players, we mentioned that video in the production meeting and the, some of the players, their whole demeanor changed. It was almost like this, just wait, just watch. Yeah. Sarkeesian, just wait, just watch. People are waiting and watching. UTSA says, this is what we do. A 10-7 lead for the Roadrunners. Not a 12-point underdog. Onside kick. Roadrunners have it. 
They catch Texas sleeping. This, I, I, I'm excited, right? Because I, I play special teams in college, play special teams in the NFL. This is a beautiful play. The reason this play works, look at everyone on the front line of Texas. All those guys are backing up. Every single one of those guys, not just on this kickoff, but on the last few kickoffs, they've all been backing up early. With players backing up, you can't go backward and go forward that quickly. Surprise onside kick, perfectly executed based off of film review. I love that call. Jamori Robinson with the recovery. Wow. What do you make of this start? I don't think we can we can just gloss over the start that we've seen from Texas. Yeah, we, yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't gloss over it in the least bit. This has to be a concern for Texas. Swing pass. Getting it out to Cephas. Cephas to the 35-yard line, and the Roadrunners are cooking. One thing that was interesting, we talked to Frank Harris. We asked him, hey, well, how would you describe your, they call the three receivers, they call him the three-headed monster. He said with Cephas, he's always going to be in the right spot at the right time. He plays slot receiver. He's bold. He's not afraid to run across the middle, but that's a guy you can trust. Brady motions out backwards pass. Is he going to throw? He is. He's looking for Franklin. It's floating. He makes the catch. How did he do that? U-T-S-A. Yeah, we don't know what's going on either. Hey, that wasn't a I don't know what's going on, Low. That was I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. Zakari Franklin last year went for over 1,000 yards, had 12 touchdowns, dynamic receiver you saw the backward pass it was played correctly interestingly enough but i am not surprised real quick one note high red zone we heard steve sarkeesian say it that's where they run their trick plays will sign off as the coordinator comes from the jeff brom if you will coaching tree remember the purdue football coach who runs all these trick plays played was at louisville before high red zone 40 yard line it's like a 30 and the 45 trick play zakari franklin I'll take all of that and more. And gone is all the talk about Alabama meaning something. Wow. And that's a ball. You know, I don't that's even a, know if you throw that football. You know, <laughs> but sometimes when things are going your way, people can't be slow down. People talk about X's and O's versus Jimmy's and Joe's, right? Sometimes even if the play call doesn't work, you need your playmaker to go make plays. It's the reason why he wears one of those single-digit numbers, number four. This UTSA football team, you don't just wear number four, number three, or number five, number seven, number two. You have to vote for these numbers. And some of these players, you know, the quarterback, defender, Rashad Wisdom with the zeros, they got every single vote, but single digits, they got most of the votes for that single-digit number. What a gutsy series of events for Texas and UTSA. The Roadrunners go for an onside kick. Throw it backwards to Brendan Brady, who throws into double coverage to see Zakari Franklin make the catch. But notice there was no surprise on that. Like, there's Robinson to the 30. Oh, the ball is out. UTSA says we've got it. Was it down on contact? I've not seen a signal. I didn't see the ball pop out either, but UTSA certainly did. And on the Jumbotron, we're looking. This could be close. The runner was down. First down, Texas. So ruling on field that the runner is down. Keelan hits Roshan Johnson in the helmet. No, this will stay as is. That will be Texas football. It will stay as is, but notice who's on that special teams unit. Number zero, Wisdom, Rashad Wisdom. That's one of their best players playing on special teams. Yeah, they believe that. Like Texas, put your best players on special teams. Longhorns need a response. Robinson putting the head down and gets three yards on first down. Now, this is where you wonder, does doubt creep in? This is still a Texas football team 
that has won only two of their last nine games. Well, it's about how you respond. It's about how you respond. We talk about punch and counter punch. You heard that from Jeff Trailer. It has to be the same with Steve Sarkeesian. Back to B. John Robinson. Patient run. And it's taking the entire UTSA defense to bring him down. But Robinson still looking to break one. The long so far for him is five yards. And he's now at double digit carries. Last week, 21 carries, 57 yards, third and two. Longhorns one for four on third down. Johnson the running back, and it goes to Roshan Johnson. He's got the first down. Avery Morris with the stop, along with Wachuku. And the Texas player is down. Texas offensive lineman looks like Cole Hudson. And it is Cole Hudson, a freshman from Frisco. We'll get an update, hopefully get back Texas football on Longhorn Network presented by your South Texas Ford dealers is brought to you by Whataburger stop on by Whataburger and try the patty melt today it's an all-time favorite for a reason so the freshman Cole Hudson comes off the field for Texas after being injured on the previous play there he is on the sideline that's good to see Logan Parr, Swiss Army Knife on the Texas offensive line, comes into play right guard. But right now, Texas averaging 2.9 yards per carry, trying to get the run game going. Inside pass to Jordan Whittington, stays up for an extra yard, and that's four yards on first down. Sam, what does Texas need to get going here? They need a big play. They need a big play. You're down by 10, seven minutes left. You've been... Uh, not great on third down specifically. Last week wasn't great on, in the red zone. I get it. Just let defensive coordinators have some of the corners bail, but you need a shot play. You need a big play to get points on the board. Second and six. Out to Xavier Worthy. Casey came with a good block. Another good block by Jordan Whittington for Xavier Worthy. Let's check in with Alex. Well, Lowell and Sam, you can see that Texas is trying to limit the frust frustration that's mounting down here on the sideline. Keandre Coburn came over, kind of slammed his helmet down, but Ovi Okafu came over to his teammates. He says, guys, let's stay with this. Let's go. We've got this. So much talk about the leadership council for this team. It's time for them for the action on the field. Whittington, nice game of physicality for Jordan Winnington, and that's a first down for the Longhorns, starting to pick up momentum. Well, when you're in a game like this, you talked about that word momentum. Out on the field, you feel that momentum is slipping away. When you're in the booth or out there in the stands or watching, you can't do anything about it, but those players on the field can do something about it. You saw Jordan Whittington right there, Casey Kane getting the block, saying, we're going to do something about this and change the momentum. Texas trying to get to the perimeter against his Roadrunners defense. Card. Taking a shot, Sanders underthrown. Did he get the foot down? No, he did not. Looking for Jatavion Sanders, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Big Cage, the transfer from LSU. On the defense there, clear call. Out of the, bounds. The coaches, the UTSA coaches talked about Pig Cage. They talked about how he didn't have, he didn't play a lot early. But now they said, we believe in him. He's young. He's going to come on strong. That was a great play. Playing through the ball, no penalty. And Nick Troy Fortune, the transfer from West Virginia, starting cornerback, being helped up off the turf. His first season at UTSA. Teammates love him. Coaches say he's fit in like he's been in the system for years. Just year number three. For Jeff Trailer. UTSA has never beaten an opponent 
inside the AP Top 25. Card now to the bottom of the screen. And count them one, two, three running backs. Roshan to Bijan Robinson makes a man miss. Mayfield hits a turf. Robinson still up. That's the run that Bijan Robinson needs. And now that you're in the red zone, it's a run that you need. Great run, but now that you're in the red zone, you have to turn these red zone opportunities into points. Great vision by Bijan Robinson. But last week Alabama, against Alabama, Texas was one for five in the red zone. One touchdown in the red zone. That's a four point swing. You're down by 10, you need points here. Direct snap to Roshan Johnson. Shades of the Kansas State game. Wiggling, hurdling, moving it down inside the five. It ain't just Bijan in the backfield, it's Roshan in the backfield. Rojo in the backfield. You see similarity, size the defender up, jump over him, look at the end zone, stay on balance. We talked to him this week, he talked about being a servant Leader. Well, he's serving up some hurdles <laughs> on this play uh, right here. Up and over Dewan Griffin. This program's been on the wrong side of some hurdles through the years. <laughs> Good to see one go in the way of the burnt orange. Back to Roshan Johnson. And he's picked up and will be brought down by Trey Moore. Steve Sarkeesian talked with Lowell in the meeting or even throughout the week about contingency plans. What happens if your quarterback can't go? What happens if you're not moving the ball as expected? Well, we're starting to see more of this wildcat offense we saw last year. Roshan, I don't know if they called it Rocat offense, but last year against Kansas State, injuries at quarterback, you get Roshan in the backfield. That could be a contingency plan to get the offense going. Card now behind center. Flanked by the running backs. Bijan Robinson, open hole, and finishes. Bijan Robinson into the end zone in a response by Texas. 11 play, 67 yard drive. I said they needed a shot play. They didn't need a big play, but they needed to do little plays that will do them well. Bijan Robinson with the vision, with the cutback, cutting the lead down matriculating the ball down the field. Jordan Whittington with that catch. Casey Kane with the block. Everyone's coming together on this Texas offense to try and get points on the board without your star quarterback on the field. Auburn's kick is up and good. And we've got a field goal game. So Texas looking for a way to get the running game going. Started with the direct snaps to Roshan Johnson, and it wraps up. Hold on to that football, Bijan. End zone for number five. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Huge game for both these programs. Texas trying to get on the trajectory that UTSA is on, quite frankly, as a program right now. As it stands, Roadrunners with the lead by three. Bijan Robinson getting into the end zone. It's been a tough goal for Robinson for the entire Texans offense as UTSA has come out focused on shocking the Longhorns here in Austin. Short kick, Clark with the return, spinning off one tackle, but then brought down. Sam did not see this coming with UTSA getting tricky. Did not see this coming, but UTSA did. Shout out to the film review by UTSA. You saw the people in the front line bailing do the onside. Then you go to the trick play, which actually was defended well, but Brendan Brady, Brady, Mr. Do-It-All, you saw he can throw the ball. Last in week one, he actually punted the ball on a pooch punt. And then and then Franklin, Zakari Zaka Zaka Franklin, UTSA single season reception leader, single season receiving yards leader, program leader in receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns. 80 catches last year, 1,022 yards and 12 tutties. He was not surprised. So what I want to know from UTSA fans, which is the more iconic catch? Cardenas against UAB or Franklin on that catch here in Austin? Well, it depends how this final result happens. You saw the UAB was a huge win. Ball start, number 68, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, we said earlier before the broadcast, this is going to be the biggest game of the week. We had talked about that earlier this morning. And so far, this is what it looks like. 
Yeah, there's been some dog games yes. today. Yes. Blowouts left and right. Short run on first down by Barnes. Chade Barron with the tackle. Now everything really changes if Texas can get a stop here, take the lead into the break, think the dynamic of the game changes entirely. But what's even more important than that dynamic is what does this drive specifically look like? This drive, a 20 play drive first, a 10 play drive, two play touchdown drive. This drive will tell us everything we need to know. Overshown from the edge. Harris trying to get away. The lefty had the angle and a brilliant throw on the run. On the money to Joshua Cephas. They say that speed kills. Frank Harris is no slouch. This dude saw the blitz. The Marvion Overshown, one of the fastest players on the team. Frank Harris scrambles 17 yards later. First down. There are six Longhorns in pursuit. And Harris, the national leader in total yards per game, makes the play. Brady stumbling forward for two yards on first down. And another UTSA offensive lineman limping and down, as that's Luke Lopez. Going to the turf. So games like this, right, when you're the team that is perceived to be overmatched when it comes to personnel, they can completely change when you have that guy, that one guy that can carry you and create a problem that you're not used to seeing. And Frank Harris is that guy. Frank Harris is that guy. I mean, I'm just gonna rattle off some stats real quick, if you don't mind. He's, he's uh, not only was he a Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award semifinalist, but he's a UTSA single season record holder for passing yards, completions, touchdowns, completion percentage, passing efficiency, total offense, and touchdowns responsible for. I actually met him a couple weeks ago before their season even started. I think before I even knew what was calling this game, and I felt this leadership quality in him, this confidence in him, before even knowing I was going to be able to get a chance and watch film on, on him. Then you turn on the film, and you see that confidence overflowing. This dude is unafraid. Mr. San Antonio. He's got the area code 210 tattooed on his calf. This means everything to him. Brady hit hard. Jalen Ford dropping in to make the tackle. Oh, we got feedback Jimi Hendrix style inside the stadium right now. And just going back to that quarterback, Lowell, he's been through a lot. I mean, it's in high school, yeah. tore his ACL came back towards other ACL at UTSA. UTSA was the only school that offered him to play quarterback. Everyone else said, go play receiver, go play DB. He said, no, I want to be a QB. And that was showing us why he's QB1. What does Frank Harris come up with here on third and long? And a flag on the play, false start. That's something the Roadrunners cannot afford right now as Cephas started early. TSA right now is five of five for six on third down. There's obviously that penalty oh. in the red zone that turned into a first down. Third and 11 makes it harder, but we've seen UTSA do it before. Frank Harris has done this before. He scrambles, watch out for his legs. Both last two weeks games, he's had a long run on second or third down. Franklin and Jamison bottom of the screen. See how healthy perhaps Jamison is. Swing pass to Brady over one tackle. Ford couldn't bring him down, but Overshone and company was there. And this will force a UTSA punt. And what will Texas dial up here? They are at their best special teams wise when Keelan Robinson, number seven, is getting back to the punter. Lucas Dean, semifinalist for the Ray Guy back in 2020 from Pro Kick Australia. Same program that produced Michael Dixon and Ryan Bucheski. No pressure from Texas. Worthy back. And out of bounds, no chance for a return for Xavier Worthy. 
So 2.15 on the clock. We always know this is what programs practice endlessly during the week. Yeah, end of half scenarios, end of half and end of game scenarios that usually determine the outcome of the game. And in practice, it's not just like, okay, this is practice, this is the practice, going down the field, come back. No, we do situations in practice. All right, two minutes left. We've got three timeouts, down by three. How do you go through that situation? You do it with your starter. How often is Hudson Carr be able to do it, especially this week with the limited availability with the ankle? And I want to see how much they even try to push it downfield here. And if they are okay going into the half with a three-point deficit, the last thing they want is a turnover on this side of the field. Carry to Robinson. Good for about four on first down. Now, go back to last week against Alabama. Played it very conservatively right before the half until Bijan broke a big run. Then they hit him on the sideline, and that led Texas to start hurrying up a little bit more. But they were very methodical. Here's Sanders right on the marker. And is there a late hit? Sanders got blasted. Donye Taylor. Let's take a look and see exactly what went down on the sidelines. We uh, a little shove there. We've seen, yeah, I see the shove, but we've seen Clifford Chapman, their safety, make back-to-back -back big plays. He made the tackle on the last play, made the tackle on this play. Six-five safety, rangy. Third and one. Robinson with the first down, still up to the 35. And a tough run there by P. John Robinson. First down and more. And you have more time than you think. I get it's a two-minute drill. And I mean, look at that balance. Look at the contact balance. Look at the vision. More time than you think. Three timeouts. You can run the ball. And this is UTSA wanting the timeout. So, so why would UTSA call a timeout here? The reason why, as we all know, Jeff Trailer understands the same thing that we're talking about up here. The difference in these, these two minutes, this minute and 34 seconds, they understand clearly, and Jess Lev, the defensive coordinator, understands, we get a stop here, everything changes. Let's not give up momentum. They've been playing sound football. Clifford Chapman with those two big stops. You call timeouts and understand, tell your defense, this matters more than anything else. Here's my guys. Griff, can I get a wave? Come on, Griff. There we go. Brian Robinson's raising the roof. That's how cool he is. Fozzie got the horns up. Alex is flexing. Give the people what they want, Alex Loeb. <laughs> Texas game day. Halftime is coming up. Griff, come on, man. You don't have to show off. 134 on the game clock until we get to the fellas at the half. Card flushed. Here comes pressure. Card moving well. Whittington was open on the sideline. That's a mixed bag there, right? Don't want to see Card pressured, but for the first time, we got to see Card on the hook. Yes, yeah, so and people don't understand how hard it is to throw the football on the run. That's one of the reasons why Coach Sarkeesian said, hey, I'm, I'm going to have Quinn Ewers be the starter. His ability to throw the football on the run. Obviously, Hudson Card is banged up, and so that ankle still may not be right. But that pass, you'd like it to be more accurate. And good pressure there by Brandon Matterson. Kyle Flood saying he believes he's the best player in this Roadrunners defense. Card, better time here. Robinson. Robinson slipping through. Spin move to the 50 and the 45. The Heisman hopeful starting to turn and burn. And one thing I love about some of the runs that you see from Bijan Robinson. It's like people love to say, hey, get downhill, get downhill. Well, he understands his speed. He understands his elusiveness. He's gaining yards without getting immediately downhill. Texas with all three timeouts at their disposal. 116 on the clock. Robinson goes to the sideline. Texas doesn't miss much. And Rojan Johnson checks in. Card all day to Casey Kane, who is hit immediately. And it's Pig Cage with the stop. Texas good to the clock wind down a little bit more. Roshan Johnson. Good room up the middle, and Roshan Johnson is to the 30-yard line before Jamal Ligon 
And Rashad Wisdom slow him down. 44 seconds in ticket. And the last time out here for UTSA. Huge here. What's the mindset for this Texas offense with these final 41? Is it seven or bust? Or do you play it safe and just try to tie this game going into the half? Yeah, there's no such thing as playing it safe. You see hands on hips on the defense. That means the guys are tired. You've been running the ball consistently. You're in the high red zone. Maybe you take a shot here, but also you understand you have three timeouts. The entire playbook is open. And so, of course, you want to come away with a touchdown, but you're not thinking avoid turnovers. You're thinking get points on the board, period. Texas has not trailed at the half against a group of five opponent since 2007 against TCU when the Horned Frogs were in the Mountain West. Now, important to note, Texas came back and won that game. And UTSA, I mean, this isn't your typical group of five. They have NFL talent. They've got guys playing in the NFL, starting in the NFL right now. And it's Texas talent here on both sides of the football. Roshan Johnson, left side, open field, get off me! He says to Mayfield, well, the rest of the Roadrunners are there to make the stop, including Booker Brown. And you talk about populating the football, that's what you see. You see this UTSA football team populating the ball. Nick Booker Brown, he missed week one, he transferred, there was some, they're trying to figure out eligibility with that transfer, came back in week two against Army, he splashed, had a huge stop against Army. And then he's coming here and he's flashing again. He's a big guy, wears 41, but he's a playmaker. And Jeff Trailer knows the significance of this drive right here for his chances to win this game. Jess Left, defensive coordinator for UTSA, says we want to be known as a defense that runs hard to the football, knocks some heads around. They've done that thus far here tonight. And, and quite frankly, Lowell, they've, they've done that all season. You, know, you talk about identity equals repeated action. This UTSA defense is building their identity over repeated action, physical, flying around, technique sound football. Looks like Christian Jones may have moved a bit on the right side, not called. Now there is a flag. Can't move backwards here. Illegal snap, number 65, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, double pump, and we got here from Jake Majors. Yep. He's trying to say that Lamont McDougal was offside. He's gonna get that call. Hard all day long. Christian Jones with a pancake right side. Xavier Worthy coming back to make the catch. But here we go. Third down, still a long field goal attempt from here. Burt Auburn has been good. Had a critical kick late against Alabama to give Texas the lead. But Texas has had issues with snaps and holds. And, and Jess Lepp, the defensive coordinator for UCSA, is calling a great game. You saw a three-man rush on a shot play by Texas. Third and seven. Here's more pressure. Card looking, pumping, flag on the play. He is hit. And in and out of the hands of Sanders, broken up by Trey Moore. Have to wait and see what this flag is. You're thinking holds when the flag is where it is right now in the backfield. That is a huge play right there for UTSA. And here comes the field goal team. So first time that we're gonna see Burt Auburn tonight was four for five against Bama. Connecting from 26, 33, 24, and 49. This one from 43. Trying to tie it. Oh, he's moved forward, not called. 
Auburn, a 44-yard attempt is good. That ties it up at 17. A little hesitation stutter there from Bert Auburn. But it's through the uprights, and it's a tie game. It's like, you know, you, the soccer players, when they're about to kick the penalty yep. kicks, and they do that little step. You wonder if that should, yeah. Texas will take it. Got to imagine, though, seeing the fire in the eyes of Jeff Trailer. He Should. probably sees that as the win. Yeah. Texas was driving. Bevo 15. Saying I want some more points. Twelve seconds left. This has been an action-packed first half. Texas kept everyone waiting to see who the quarterback would be. Hudson Card came out. UTSA struck first with a 3-0 lead after having the ball at the one-yard line. They couldn't punch it in. So somewhat of a win for Texas there to make it 3-0. And I think part of the reason why Jeff Trailer was so upset and fiery is that he's saying that should have been a a legal shift, a false start on yeah. the kicker. Yeah. And those three points, 44-yard field goal, you move it back five yards, 49, the math changes. Now, let's keep in mind, still so much football left to play. But whereas Texas has really struggled in one-possession games, UTSA is 11-4 in those tight games under Jeff Trailer. Still a lot of time to play. We go to the half, tied up at 17. Roadrunners won the toss, they deferred. They will get the football in the second half. But the unexpected onside kick. Halfback pass to Franklin for a touchdown. We're seeing it all. Here's Alex with Coach Sark. Coach, tie game going into the half. What's the message to your team in the locker room? Well, I thought we finally settled down there late in the second quarter, especially defensively. We finally got a stop. We tackled better on that series. Uh, we weren't tackling very good early on. They were bouncing off us, creating explosive plays, um, and matriculating the ball down the field. So we got to get some stops on defense, get them to third down and get off the field. You bring up that they were having some explosive plays with Frank Harris having his way a little bit. Just what, what will they look to your defense do differently in the second half? Well, they're going to get some short completions. So that's okay. We got to tackle the guy when they throw it to him. We're missing those tackles. They're turning three and four yard completions into 10, 15 yard gains. That's what we can't have happen. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Alex, thank you so much. Now to another Alex that is dear to me. Alex Loeb, Texas game day at the half. Guys, don't have too much fun without me. Great, albeit unexpected first half. UTSA in Texas presented by South Texas Ford Dealers. UTSA 17, Texas 17. You heard it right. Welcome back inside DKR. I'm Mo Galindo here with Sam Macho. Sam, Steve Sarkeesian told us leading up to this game, his team need to understand how powerful this game is because what it means for the psyche of the team, the trajectory of the program overall, and the start of Big 12 play coming up. Do they get it? Do they get it, Sam? Well, we'll see in this second half. I would, I'd love to have been in that locker room and know what was said. On UTSA side, keep, I understand, like, this is a plan, but for Texas, what do you say? Well, they have 30 minutes of game time to find out. 
And Sam, you're saying UTSA absolutely controlling this game. Hands down. You see the surprise on side kick. Front line's back. You do the surprise, execute it perfectly. Then you see the double pass. High red zone. Throw it back to your running back, Brendan Brady. And then Zakari Franklin does what Zakari Franklin does. And then last but not least, Frank Harris using his legs. Last year, he had a 13% pressure to sack ratio, meaning that even though he got pressured, he very rarely went down. That's what Frank Harris has been doing, and that's why this UTSA team is in this football game the way they are. They struck first with a 74-yard drive, taking 20 plays that led to a field goal, and Harris throwing to Franklin. Let's catch up with Alex Chappell, who talked with Coach Trailer. Hey there, Lowell and Sam. Yes, and Sam, that's exactly what Coach Trailer said. He said, we go as Frank Harris goes. What you're seeing tonight is what he does for us week in, week out. His message to his team, keep doing what we're doing. Continue to play hard as they get ready for the second half. And he said they do have a few more trick plays in store. Uh-oh. But that's what it takes to win a game like this, right? And that's where this offensive coordinator comes from. When he was at Louisville, he played at Louisville. He understands this kind of, you gotta take shots when it's the right time. Not recklessly, but purposefully. Third down here for Jeff Trailer in his offense. It's third and three. UTSA five of seven on third down in the first half. Harris to throw, or will he? The lefty scrambles, trying to get the corner, extending, and he's got the first down. Frank Harris, averaging better than six yards per carry. Texas knew that that would be a point of concern. Off script. He leads the nation in all purpose yards. One thing you notice about him is his eyes are always down the field. It's almost as if he's a reluctant runner. Well, early in his career, he would run all the time. He's become a better passer, but he still has got this idea of, I can use my legs whenever I need them. Conference USA preseason player of the year. Sixth year for UTSA. He's got a man downfield underthrown and through the hands of JT Clark. He was running away from Ryan Watts. If that is put on the money, that's six points, Sam. Two notes. They went back to the play that had a penalty earlier. That's the double move, note number one. Note number two, JT Clark does not drop them often. He had a huge catch in overtime. And that is a roughing call on Baron Sorrell. So they don't get the deep shot, but they get 15. And they get a first down. Going back to JT Clark. He doesn't drop those off. And in, in both overtimes, he had two huge catches. I get it, one you won, one you lost. But if you're a receiver, if you're a JT, you say, hey, give me the ball back. I'm going to go make my play. Frank Harris is one pass touchdown to tie Dalton Stern for the most in UTSA history. Obi Gofu there, along with Brian Byron Murphy. Force him back, Brendan Brady. Do you notice, Lowell, the line of scrimmage UTSA is really moving the line of scrimmage. You didn't see this last week. That's a great point. With Alabama, you, Texas controlled the line of scrimmage. UTSA, especially the interior three, are controlling the line of scrimmage. You see the interior three. They're all been here for three years, three-year starters. Really good players. Sorrell slips. Thrown. Clark, another opportunity. It was behind them. And that's Ryan Watts breaking it up, leading the third and eight. I love how Frank Harris went right back to him. We asked him earlier in the, in the week, he had a, he, get, he was sacked a couple times, and you notice his body language never changed. And he said, man, these guys aren't trying to, you know, give up sacks or drop passes. I trust them. And you're seeing that trust on this play. I wouldn't be surprised if you go right back to JT Clark on this play. Play clock winding down, and that's going to be a delay of game. Delay of game, zero, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. But do you see Trailer's demeanor? Ron's telling his guys it's okay. Obviously not happy internally. Trying to keep that even keel. He's a confident coach. He's a confident 
human being. I talked to him before the game. I asked him if he was nervous. He said, no, I feel like my guys are prepared. And it's showing. Third and 13 now. Here comes Murphy on the pressure. Tough angle for a lefty to throw here. Jalen Ford makes the play in the open field, and that is a big stop by 41 in the burn orange. So opening drive leads to a punt for UTSA. At the shot downfield, and they still would rather trade the catch from Clark with a roughing passer call that they did get. Drive stalled after that. Xavier Worthy standing just north the five yard line. We'll let this one go and it's into the end zone. So an opportunity for Hudson Card in the Texas offense when we return after the opening drive for UTSA is scoreless. It is now time for the drive of the game, presented by South Texas Ford Dealers, the proud truck provider for Bebo. This is at the end of the first quarter. Now, Texas got a gift. Going for it on fourth and short, UTSA was off sides, started to get creative to get the playmakers involved. Whittington on the sweep with the forward pitch, and then Card rolling, hitting Roshan Johnson, and Roe into the end zone. Get the Texas Longhorns on the board. Lord Lindo here with Sam Acho, Alex Chapel on the field. And it still seems like the Texas offense has not found their rhythm yet, Sam. They haven't, but it's because of the UTSA defense. I mean, this brand of football is what we've seen all season long. We saw it against Army. Even though they gave up a lot of passing yards, they held Army, which is a running football team, uh, to 170 rushing yards, which sounds like a lot, but it's not against Army. Direct snap to Roshan Johnson. Gets it to Bijan. Bijan thinking house. B. John Johnson. Bijan Robinson to the end zone. Off the feed from Roshan. It's like the law firm there. Johnson and Robinson. Out's call. Wow. 78 yards. For Robinson. And notice who's in at quarterback. Both running backs in the game. Great protection, great blocking up front. And you do these three yard, two yard, one yard runs, hoping that one will break. And finally, it did. That is how you turn the tie. And you put. Two of your top playmakers in the backfield and let them go wild. Roshan Johnson, direct snap. Sark says, that's what I've been looking for. Bijan does the rest. Look at that. Man is fired up. Longest run of Bijan Robinson's career, 78 yards. Texas football on Longhorn Network. Presented by your South Texas Ford dealers is brought to you by Omni Barton Creek Resort and Spa, where you can stay a part of the game. He's John Robinson had gone five straight games without eclipsing the century mark on the ground. Well, with one carry, not only has the longest run of his career, but he goes over 100 yards in this game, the 10th time that he's done that in his career. And that is how you get back on track. That's how you get back on track, and that's how you get your playmakers the ball. Feed the beast. Feed the bee. End zone. Let's take another look, Sam. What made this go? Well, you see Cole Hudson, he's gonna pull on the back side and Bijan makes the play he makes the cut there's vision on there but for me it's that it's that gap scheme you see that pulling from Hudson divides the defense and finds the end zone and look at the fire know where your bread is butter get it to the best player on the field that is Bijan Robinson 
17 unanswered for the Longhorns. Roadrunners need an answer. Quick pass to Franklin. The game on first down, and that is what Texas is expecting a lot from. from UTSA, the quick pass game, because the protection has not been good this season. UTSA has not allowed a sack in this game. Sorrell off the edge. Did he get a piece of that pass? It certainly was affected by the speed and the pressure of the sophomore. Sooner or later, if you're the edge rushers at Texas, you have to say, I need to take over. You know that, you believe that you're better than the people across from you. You're going against the, on the left tackle was a former left guard, it's a Tafu, a guard playing tackle, a walk-on playing tackle. You have to say, I must win. Third and six. Harris over the middle. P, P, U. Deshaun Jamison with some questions if he would be healthy enough to go tonight with the twick in his ankle against Alabama. One of the reasons that they decided to put Deshaun Jamison at field corner is because of his makeup speed. Notice how quickly he stays with the receiver, doesn't get beat, he flips his hips, plays through the ball. Coach Sarkeesian giving updates on the injured players who went down against Alabama, saying all of them day to day one of the guys on the list was Deshaun Jamison. And the pressure coming. Low liner. And that will be down at the 36-yard line. This season, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund for every field goal and extra point made by Texas. For that, we say thank you, Allstate. Burt Auburn had one before the half. It was a big momentum turner for the Longhorns. Tied off the game at 17, going into the break. Texas taking advantage. Long run by Bijan Robinson to give the Horns the lead. What do they do now? Handling success. It's the theme of this drive. Card to throw. Good protection, and he's got Woodington. Woodington going backwards to go forward. And into UTSA territory before Martavius Bridge brings him down. For a route like that to develop, you have to have time. Watch Christian Jones absorb the, absorbs the bull rush, allows Hudson Card to have the time to complete that 26-yard gain to Jordan Whittington. Whittington was electric last week against Alabama. He can be such a vital part of this Texas offense when healthy. And he's put in so much work to stay in that way. Good tackle there by Mayfield on Worthy. Wennington was trying to hold the block. This Texas trying to work into the perimeter. No, no matter what the story is for the first half of the game, you go into that locker room and you say, hey, it's 0-0. Now, literally here, it essentially was 0-0, 17-17. But you go back to your game plan. You rely on the run we saw in the first series. You get your shot here in the second. Weddington in motion. Card rolling in trouble. Going back to Roshan Johnson. He breaks free from one tackle. And it's made up by Trevor Harmonson. First tackle is going to get him. John a little bit. This game means a lot. Yeah, great awareness by Trey Moore. He's a, a redshirt freshman who's all over the field. He had that big stop in the first half on that pass to Tavion Sanders. I know he missed the tackle, but that dude can play. And Card is limping a little bit. Haven't seen that to this point. Ankles heavily taped. That was an issue after he met the entire Alabama defense in the third quarter on a hit. Swing pass, and that was blown up in the backfield by Nick Troy Fortune. If he had his heads up, that may be a pick six. 
So the notebook on, on Nick Troy Fortune, when you watch this tape, the first thing that stands out is he's a fearless tackler. And this is a fearless play. Obviously, film review coming in for the play. Huge play against a huge game against Houston in week one. And then big play right there. Third and 15, awareness, coming in, shooting your gun, making the play. And that's exactly what UTSA needed. Here's Trey hold a punt. Gets it off. Cephas. No chance for return. That was well out of bounds. So what can Frank Harris get cooking now? The offense has slowed down a little bit since the beginning and that surge had all the momentum after that onside kick and the halfback touchdown off the pass. Where do they go to now? You don't blink. You don't blink. You understand that the big run was given up early in the first early in this half, but you don't blink. You realize, man, we had two big plays that we dropped. One was a penalty, one was a drop for touchdowns. Now, yes, the double moves may not work yet, but I know we can get matriculate the ball down the field. Watts on the blitz. Brady, full head of steam up the middle, and the numbers don't sum up the, the factor that Brady has been in this game. He is running hard and taking the lion's share of the work. There he is again, and that's first down yardage from Brendan Brady, the man that Frank Harris had to basically beg to come back to the team after he hung him up. Remember, this was a UTSA team that featured one of the best running backs in America with Sincere McCormick. He's now with the Raiders. Did so much to set up one-on-ones outside for the receivers. So a huge void that the Roadrunners have been trying to make up in that backfield. Harris, sideline, catch by Cephas before he goes out of bounds right at the 41-yard line. You saw the pump fake by Harris. Cephas on this route gets the toe tap down. They practice this all the time. This is what makes me so impressed by these receivers. See if there's only six drops in his career. Jalen Ford in on the run stop. Just notice, notice though, Low, the line of scrimmage is, is, is three yards forward for UTSA. Every run is two yards, three yards, five yards, seven yards. You don't see very many negative plays. And that is shocking to me. After watching the film, high end zone, seeing how dominant the interior Texas defensive line was against Bama. Did not see that coming. Open field opportunity. Barron cannot make the stop. But Jamison does against Barnes. Third down and long here. This is a huge third down. Because you have to respond from what the Texas offense did. You're down by seven, but you have to respond. Frank Harris has used his leg consistently. There's pressure from the backside. Breaks free on the run, first down. To the Corian, J.T. Clark. The big three, the three-headed monster at receiver. It's legit. It's real for the folks from San Antonio. Pressured but not sacked. Both ends, Ojimo and Sorrell, both run by the tackles. That play was all about Frank Harris. He didn't need blocking on that. And that was the difference last week against Bama. Ryan Watts coming on the blitz. Could not bring down Young. Harris. Big hit by Overshone and Ford. Ball out. Ball out. Who's on the bottom of the pile? Who comes up with a pigskin? And it is UTSA. Wow. Living right are the Roadrunners right now. Ford with a gorgeous strip. People talk about why would you run to the ball or cover the ball as offensive line coaches say. This is why. Ernesto Almaraz, I believe, was the player in for UTSA to clean it up. Harris rolling. 
Cardenas inside the 30. Scoring territory for UTSA. And this game has had such big swings. UTSA dominating. Texas gets it back. Robinson scores. And you think Longhorns are running. They get a stop. And UTSA, cool, calm, collected, marching down the field. They talked about absorbing these blows by, that they knew they would get from Texas. So far, you absorb one blow with the touchdown. Now you're giving a blow back. Harris over the middle to Franklin. Franklin inside the five. Anthony Cook brings him down. Brilliant pass to Zakari Franklin. You, know, you talk to their offense. I talked to their offense coordinator before the game. You talk about these three receivers, along with the quarterback. They've been here for so long. They understand the offense so well. You just keep on building on what you've been doing before. There's a chemistry here. Frank Harris. The throwing motion's a little funky. Quarterback coach O.C. Wilstein says it's common sense coaching. Don't mess with something that works. Harris perfect on this drop. Flag on the play. Barnes has swallowed up. Trying to take on the interior of the Texas D-line. See what we got. Illegal formation, five men lined up in the backfield, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Eighth penalty for Jeff Trailer and UTSA. We asked Will Stein about that throwing motion being funky, and he said, well, hey, have you seen his completion percentage? <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, you Steph Curry, he has a, a low release point. When he shoots Larry Bird, people are different. Check the results. Completing 68% on the season. Texas player cramping. It would appear on a hot, muggy night here in Austin. It's what you hope for. Not something worse on a night like this. And that's Ovia Gofu. He's been one of the most consistent players on this Texas defense in the eyes of his head coach, Steve Sarkeesian. Had an early sack against Bryce Young last week. UTSA, Lowell, has not flinched. They have not blinked. They have not hesitated despite that huge run. Coach Trailer told Alex, still has some tricks up our sleeves. Is this where we see it down in the red zone? What do you think? Short answer is no. <laughs> red zone, they like to throw it up to their big time playmakers, which they have. They have some 16 receivers. So this isn't where you want to run the trick plays. This is where you want to run the ball, but also say, if I could see one-on-one -on -one to JT Clark, we give him the ball. Well, here's a little look, but Moro Ojimo is there, standing up Frank Harris. Sitting back to where he started from. Different look, though. Why you don't run trick plays right here? Because <laughs> now you're second and 12 or 13. Second and goal, 12 and 13. It makes it that much harder. Oscar Cardenas, top of the screen behind Zakari Franklin. Had an excellent opening drive with three first down conversions. Has been quiet since. Brady the running back. Harris to throw, two Cardenas, hits, jarred loose. Huge shot by Anthony Cook and the Barbie on Overshone. Separate ball from receiver. Cardenas is a sure-handed receiver, and he's mad at himself. He thinks he should have caught it. Ooh. Great hit by number zero. You don't think this game means a lot to the folks in Austin as well? Place is getting loud. Harris pressured by Overshone. Still running. 
flicking to the end zone. The receiver was out. Franklin comes back in for the touchdown. Zakari Franklin, the senior from Cedar Hill, at this look, has tied the game. Now he was out of bounds, re-entered. The official had his eye on everything. So he, he can't go out of bounds on his own. If he's pushed out of bounds, it's one thing. You have to reestablish. Let's see what we see. Yeah, pushed out. They would say he was pushed out. There's no, well, so what the referees oh, look at. Oh, but does he make the catch? Does he make the catch? This one needs there, to be reviewed. Yeah, it's going to be reviewed. And all scoring plays. You get that look. That ball is out. And here's, here's the review. Barely. What do you think that initial look, Sam? Well, so what the referees look at, number one, well, number one, is it a catch? It looks like it hits the ground. So that's kind of the be-all, end-all. But on, on him getting out of bounds, going back in, what the referees look at is if he's forced out, he's allowed to come in and reestablish. So you would say he is forced out because Deshaun Jameson is in contact with him. Referees aren't allowed to say how far is you how far you push. Yes, forced out. But the question goes to yeah, did he make the, the ball catch hit the ground? And it appears well, it can hit the ground, but did he have control? It appears that he. Do you see control? It appears that he. Let me. Let's look and see. Uh, that's. It appears that's as if control. the ball hits the ground without control. But it has to be indisputable evidence. That was a quick review. After further review, the ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. Fourth down at the 12 yard line. They've got to send the kicking unit on here, right? So close to being a tie game. And the pass was there. Harris was facing pressure. Moved around, up in the pocket. <laughs> Franklin could not hold on. That brings out Jared Sackett with a 30-yard attempt. It's up and through. We got a four-point game here in Austin, Texas. Three and change left in the third quarter. What could have been for Jeff Trailer? your Big 12 scoreboard presented by Dr. Pepper. Woo, we got some upsets here. Kansas State falling at home against Tulane, one of the preseason favorites in the conference. Texas Tech, that will be the Big 12 opener next week for Texas, trailing North Carolina State for Kansas. 3-0. and oh. Did I say that right? 3-0 and oh for the first time since 2009? I'll tell you what, though. That's how you make a win mean something. For Lance Leipold, the win here last season, would it be just a flash in the pan, or could they build off of that? And there is no doubt that Kansas has made that mean something. He's, Lance Leipold has built winning cultures everywhere he's been. At Buffalo, he built a winning team. Uh, you know, at University of Wisconsin, Whitewater, when he was there, he built a winning team. Kansas last year had that win against Texas, but since then, and even last year, they played close against Oklahoma and other teams. Yeah. They have built a winning brand of football, a winning team. Crazy to say. Absolutely not, not crazy if you, not to if say. You, not if you know Lance Leipold and his trajectory. Well, it's crazy to say if you've watched Kansas football post Mark <laughs> Mangino. Because yeah. it's been a dumpster fire. Even Charlie Weiss made the comments. You see that, that hump of... You know what over there? Opening carry, Robinson. He is running hard, but finding UTSA defenders left and right, Avery Morris with the hit. You also wonder overall, Texas, just how well they're holding up right now. That game against Alabama was one of the most physical games I've seen this team play in years. They got thumped nonstop. Now, they were delivering blows on the other side too. Second and nine here. 
Card. Looking downfield, he's gonna run. The ankle looking good until falls down just shy of the 30 yard line. Call it the 29. And he's hobbling. Look at that. Mama, there goes that man, Nick Booker Brown in the backfield. Actually, that might be T Bell. That might be T Bell, number 40 in the backfield. He's a really good pass rusher as well. Jamori Robinson, number 40 for UTSA. Man that had that big. Onside recovery. So third and six, Texas needs to move the chains. And they have an answer here. Card in and out of the hands of Roshan Johnson. That throw looked a little off the mark. Catchable though, Sam? Catchable, he still looked like he was would have been a, a, a little bit short. Even with the catch. Yeah, that's catchable. But that's a huge stop for UTSA's defense. You, you said, okay, our offense scored. Now we're going to stop Texas and give our offense the ball again to try and get another, another opportunity for points. Some pressure by UTSA. Kick is off. Seep is calling for the fair catch. Oh, he's going to field it off the hop. But a good punt by Trejo. Here's the truth, though. With every tick that goes off this clock, there's going to be more and more uneasiness in the crowd because this is a fan base that has seen it happen. There's going to be thoughts of the game against Kansas that pop up. Now, wonder, does that trickle down to the Texas sideline as well? Oh, it can't trickle down to the sideline because you understand the assignment on the football field. You understand that no matter what the crowd says, you're the one who can control the outcome physically. And that's what this opportunity is. This drive right here, Sarkeesian talked about turnovers. This is where you first turn over. Harris, clean pocket. Harris, big hit by Jet Bush. Out to the completion to Cephas. Yeah, Bush gets a run at linebacker. But UTSA will take that all night. That's eight yards. Harris, 19 of 25. Empty for him to Clark. Clark with the first down. Watts with the tackle. And here come the UTSA Roadrunners. Looking for that statement win. Down by four here in Austin, Texas. Playing with a lot of machismo. Releasing that social media video that went viral this week announcing their uniform combo on the steps of the UT Tower. Harris pressured, gets it off. And a crazy catch made there by Clark. Not much yardage on it, but just unreal feel for pressure by Harris. And notice how you turn a negative into a positive. That play should have been a sack. Great protection up front early on. And then you turn that negative into a positive. JT Clark making a play for his QB. Doesn't look like much, but you go from what could have been second and 12 or 13 to now second and six. UTSA with one win against the Big 12 foe. That was Baylor. No wins against the AP Top 25. High throw, it picked off. Jade Barron taking it all the way back. The one that got away. That was the difference that Sark said last week when we talked to him. We need to create turnovers. Jade Barron, great vision on the ball. He knew what play was coming. The ball was overthrown. Jade finds it, gets it to the end zone. I talked to him earlier before the game. He winked at me, said, hey, it's going to be a good one. Jade, that's the play that you need to change the game. There. 43-yard pick six. It's been a patient approach to his development. Had a little bit of an ankle issue in camp. Jalen Gilmo, the freshman, had a lot of playing time in the opener against ULM. But Barron had been a standout all camp long. These past two weeks, nothing short of sensational.
that's how you get that uneasy feeling out of the system. And, and notice, it was the guys on the field who were saying, I got to do something about this. Critical plays and critical moments. People say big time players make big time plays in big time games. That's true. Say big time game, big time player trying to show what he can do. Well, this stadium is feeling a little bit better. What's key now for Frank Harris? He's been unbelievable tonight. That was a big one, though. Adversity breeds character. It builds character. You throw an interception, how do you come back? How do you keep your team calm? The, the crowd's getting more into the game. Two pick sixes by the Longhorns this season. First time they've done that in one year since 2017. It was Jamison in the opener moments ago. Bear Harris tried the jump pass. Somehow he gets under Vernon Broughton and gets to the sideline for a small gain. We've seen it tonight. Texas has brought pressure. They have not been able to capitalize and bring down Harris. We go to the fourth quarter. That's a sign, the triangle of toughness there for Jeff Trailer. He's feeling so close. But do they have enough juice to hang with Texas? It was now surged out to a 31-20 lead. But the fourth quarter has been problematic for Steve Sarkeesian. The lights are out, shades of the Iowa State game a few years back. It's Texas and UTSA, not your typical powerhouse matchup that you would think would mean all that much. But the pivotal fourth quarter for both these teams. Texas desperate to make a close loss against Alabama mean something. UTSA trying to pull off the biggest win in program history. Harris over the middle a deep shot to his tight end dan dishman see if texas has the mental fortitude and the physicality to hang on once again you see pressure and notice harris just patient calm cool collected find the receiver back across the field his mobility is playing a major factor in this one utsa was 12 and 2 a season ago won the conference usa title but this would be by far a statement win. Let's sit it down to Alex Chapel. Well, when I spoke with Jordan Whittington, Whittington, he told me that the chemistry on this Longhorn team is totally different. This is the closest group that he's ever been part of. And he credits the off-season work every Wednesday. They worked on cultural Wednesdays. They would break up in groups of 10 or 11 and share stories with each other, get to know each other on a personal level. He says it's made a huge difference in how hard they play for each other. And here's the bottom line for this Texas team. Show me, don't tell me. Almost picked off by DeMarvion Overshone. Just welcome in DeMarvion Overshone Jr. this week. He's a proud papa now. That's a big breakup. Junior would be proud of that one. Notice he undercut the route. But talk about the cultural Wednesdays piece. This team, this one you come together. This one you say, I'm going to lean on you, you lean on me. Demo, you almost made that play. I'm going to go make one for you. That's what Texas is trying to do. Frank Harris, UTSA, is trying to quell the noise. They're trying to say, watch this. Harris, pressure up the middle, over to him. Got him. Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Marvion Overshow on the inside pressure, beats the center. Maka, he beats 
Maka for the big time sack. That's back to back. You feed off of that energy. And now what happens is now the offense needs to feed off of it. Before that, Jeff Banks, the Saints coordinator, says, maybe we go get a pump block on this one and completely switch the momentum. He says that one's for Arm Bandit Jr. right there. Here's the hit. What do you think? I love it. I love the inside pressure. Uh, the center, I hope you too. Maka slides to the right. But Demo, DeMarvion Overshone, just welcome a little one into the world. That's Junior. Nine pounds. That's a big old boy. Nine pounds, two ounces, 20. That's a big old boy right there. It's a future linebacker. Now, they're going to take a look at targeting here. And that's exactly what's happening. They're going to take a look at this for targeting on DeMarvion Overshone. There was helmet to helmet contact. No doubt about that. I can't hear. <laughs> I'm laughing at the official down on the field saying I can't hear. Not at the severity of the hit on Frank Harris. What do you think, Sam? Well, usually when they talk about targeting, it talks about the crown of the helmet and almost like six inches down, right? This radius. So you look at it, that's not, he didn't lower the head. It's not the crown of the helmet. There is incidental contact. I would not rule that as targeting, but I am no referee. So this is so critical because it's not only does he have overshown is gonna stick around for the rest of this game, but it would mean potentially missing the first half of the Big 12 opener this against Texas Tech. And this this can be reviewed even if, even if he, even if it's called now, you can go back and review it. But you don't see a lowering of the head. Usually when referees talk about this, it's the top of the helmet is what they call the crown, the very top, going down about six inches right down to the the front of that helmet. There's no lowering. See Demo pointing to his face mask. And here's the call. After further review, it's determined that there's a foul for targeting number zero of the defense. At the 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Number zero is disqualified for the remainder of the game. That's big in so many ways for this potential outcome and for next week as well. And Sarkeesian is trying to state his case that it should not have been targeted. And, and, and what you talk about trying to take out of the game is the lowering of the head. Face mask to face mask. That's what Steve Sarkeesian said. He didn't lower his head. The quarterback's going down. It's face mask. Now, what can happen is that throughout this week, that can go back and be reviewed. It can go through the Big 12. Through the Big 12, through the conference and be reviewed so that DeMarvion Overshown wouldn't miss the first half of next week's game, which is the Big 12 opener in Lubbock. Correct. But for this game, there is no review. Oh, Frank Harris showing some toughness to take that shot. Targeting or not, he was rocked. But the pride of San Antonio is back on the field. And are they trying to, to say that Harris has to come off the field for this play? I believe that is the case. So Harris is off. That means Eddie Lee Marburger will come in for this snap for UTSA. Redshirt freshman from McGowan. You've got to imagine this is get the football, turn it around, and give it to Brendan Brady. That's exactly what it is. Brady, good hole, still up. Past the 40 for Brendan Brady. 
This ain't over. It's just getting good. This now is Brady is down holding his knee. Missed tackle on the Texas defense. Haven't seen that too much. Brady has been a one-man wrecking crew. 20 carries, 70 yards. I know that three-and-a-half average isn't the greatest you've ever seen. But keep in mind, that's the man that threw the touchdown pass to Franklin as well. It's getting checked out. We'll be right back. So Brendan Brady just went to the sideline. This is why that's such a big deal, because Traylon Smith is in a boot. A senior transfer from Arkansas not playing tonight. Remember, last season had 12 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown for Arkansas in the 40-21 win against Texas. So that means with Brady on the sideline, it's Kavorian Barnes, a redshirt freshman from St. Augustine, Texas. Frank Harris has the UTSA offense moving. After that targeting call of Gofu, almost got to Harris and still ultimately no sacks on number zero here tonight no sacks but yes pressure and pressure of, I understand it's not a sack but that's a big time play of pressure getting pressure on the quarterback quarterback start to feel it hit after hit after hit an 11 point lead for the Longhorns this is the high red zone we talk about the trick plays this is when Sark said to watch out for them Gofu off the edge into traffic. What a catch. Go, go, gadget arms for JT Clark. They say he can high point the football with the best of them. Case in point, and Sam. And he can hang in the air with the best of them, too. It seemed like he was up there forever. I'm like, when is he coming down? Does gravity not exist with JT Clark? I mean, like, he Evidently was up there. Evidently not. Has to be four down territory here for Jeff Trailer in UTSA. Trying for the biggest win in program history. Under 13 minutes left to play. Barnes the running back. Harris will pull and keep. Big hit. It's going to be right at the marker. And that's going to set up a fourth down. Ryan Watts. Lamonte Tucker Dorsey. Both there. And they sent Harris backwards. Fourth and one, down by two scores. And what an impact, though, by Ryan Watts there. This is where it matters that Brendan Brady isn't available. Brendan Brady's been the one carrying the load on all of these runs. You think you could easily do an inside zone to Brady, but there is no Brady. Good call for the timeout here. No reason to rush into this one, because this is the snap of the night to this point. Brady is being checked out. And this is Frank Harris time. You've done so much for this UTSA program. There's so much on the line. And that guy right there has a knack for settling down the teammates around him. Will Stein, the offensive coordinator, says Frank Harris is everything that's good about college football. All the injuries that he suffered, overcoming adversity. He thought that he would never play the game again after two ACLs and a labrum injury. But he is back and about to take the football on fourth and one. What is Texas looking for here, Sam? Well, with the, talk about some of these quick passes outside. You could see one of those, but if I'm UTSA, I'm trusting my guys up front. Texas with a great push up the middle, and it bounces off Franklin. It was there for the taking, and a turnover on downs. Wow. You know what's crazy? usually doesn't drop these, but in week one, he dropped a couple of this exact same route against Houston. It's 
not a long history, but no doubt that Zachary Franklin, one of the greatest players in UTSA football history, look at the school ranks, he's dejected right now because of that drop on fourth and short. Alex, what are you seeing? Yeah, Lowell, well, as Frank Harris had told us when we talked with him, he said, when it comes to our big receivers, I don't ever have to give them feedback because they know when things haven't gone their way. And Zakari Franklin taking it really hard down here. His team is picking him up, but he's had his head down, and they're just trying to pump him back up. Frank Harris is sitting next to him, and he's saying, you got it next time. But it's this one's a tough one for him. Yeah, it's so much football left to play. Now the burden on the shoulders of the 11 road runners that will try to stop this Texas offense. Quick pitch to Winnington. Winnington with the corner, but a flag on the play. Down at the 30-yard line. And Roshan, for the body language, knows this one is going against Texas. Holding number two of the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. So holding on Roshan Johnson. Yeah, that's a hole. I'm sure Texas fans are saying, well, I remember the right tackle for Alabama doing the same <laughs> thing. For the first and 20, that's a big setback because we really have not seen Card push the football down the field. Bijan trying to stay up. Nothing is there. Fantastic stop by Trevor Harmonson, the leader at linebacker. This young man set the UTSA record with 19 tackles in a game. 19, Sam. He's another one of those three-year starters who's been with this program for a long time. He understands the culture. Look at that number he's wearing. We're in that number one for a reason. If you're Texas, you still play this conservative. You see the empty backfield here for Hudson Card. Card will take off and run. Hey, he still looks strong. The ankle looks healthy. Where did this burst come from? Flag down at the 50-yard line. But Hudson Card for a guy with a bum ankle. Goodness gracious, little giddy up. He was one of the top dual threat quarterbacks. There's no foul out. on the play. First down. One thing that makes Hudson Card special is his ability to run the ball. He's one of the top dual threat quarterbacks coming out of high school. And even we saw it with the injury last week. We're seeing it with looking more healthy this week. Texas with some tempo. Bijan Robinson lowering the shoulder, bringing the boom until Lamont McDougal brings him down. But man, this is a guy you know has to be feeling it a little bit. We've seen him grimacing. He's been in pain. And the scrambles haven't been the prettiest, but on that one, it looked like he was running good. When you see your quarterback who you know is injured doing that, yeah. it makes you block that much harder. Because if he can gut it out, you can gut it out too. Texas slowing it down. Back to Robinson. What a burst by Bijan. Robinson, second level. One man to beat. He trips up. He does it again. Bijan Robinson. House call. This is his house after all. What a rush by Robinson, but what a block by Jordan Whittington. You're going to see this block down the field. He stays on his guy and then Bijan Robinson the ability to have this breakaway speed most most people you're cutting you're getting vertical you're getting caught by safeties or by DB no one's catching Bijan Robinson that's what makes him special third career three touchdown game on the ground Bijan Robinson and what a swing of events from the drop to the card scramble, setting up Robinson, scampering in from 41 yards out. He's made the two biggest plays of the night for the Texas offense to help him start to run away from the road runners. Texas 
football on Longhorn Network is presented by your South Texas Ford dealers, proud truck provider for Bevo, and in part by Yeti, built for the wild, and Bud Light, it's for the fans. Mo Galindo here with Sam Ancho, DKR coming to life under the lights. Now, it was not the start Texas was looking for. First quarter was bad, especially with the program feeling like they had something to prove and had momentum after a close loss against Alabama. But I've seen this for the past decade, where in games, once adversity strikes, Texas has not been mentally strong enough to do anything about it. It's different here tonight, Sam. It is, it is. And it's almost this idea of imposing your will. 17-17 at halftime, who are you going to be? Deciding who, who are you going to be? Are you going to lay down? Are you going to step up and, and play up to who you believe that you are? So that's Frank Harris. He's got the helmet off. He's not coming into the game. So I'm head out to the huddle there. It is going to be Eddie Lee Marburger. Now, we know this. He took a shot from the Marvion Overshow and it was targeting, but he stayed in the game. UTSA does not release injury information during the game, so unable to find out the reason behind this switch. The Marburger comes in for his first real action, I would say, of his career. Not too much up the middle. That's a stop by Keandre Coburn. In the past, this would have been a game where Texas could find themselves in the final three minutes going, uh-oh, what have we done? How did we let it get to this point? And it was a team that did that consistently last season with four quarter meltdowns. That's what happened tonight. Big hit from the backside. Ball is out, but UTSA falls on it. That is recovered by Tatafu. Huge hit here. Tucker Dorsey. And what you don't want, if you're UTSA, if the game starts to get out of hand, is to have some of your players start to get injured when conference yeah. play starts to begin. Great point. And so... Well, they can't have more injuries here. I mean, there's they're running out of bodies as Kevin Davis gets up on this offensive line. They are down massively when it comes to numbers. There's third down and 12. with a push up the middle. Marburger in trouble, complete on the sideline. But that will be five yards short of the first down. Flag is down. Now this changes the dynamic with Marburger in the game. It being an 18-point deficit. With Harris, you feel like there still could be some magic there. It's more difficult to see the path to the comeback with an untested quarterback now in the game. Illegal touching, number 13 of the offense. The receiver went out on his own and was the first to touch the pass. This penalty is a loss down at the previous spot. Fourth down. Now the counter for Texas, I wonder, is this now when you go to a guy like Charles Wright? Not exactly sure how long Quinn Ewers will be out. The guy's listed as day-to-day. -day. That's Frank Clavicle. He was running. He was throwing on the field. You've heard reports about a longer time frame for a return, but from what we've seen, it looks like it may not be nearly as long as people are saying before Quinn Ewers gets back. 
And what you'd want to do is you want to stick with the run game before making a quarterback switch this early in a game. So, Sam, let's get to the play of the game presented by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the Texas Longhorns. And it is Bijan going for the longest touchdown of his career, 78 yards. I'm going to say play of the game. Pick, which one of Bijan's touchdown runs? I mean, he had three. Uh, there's two right here we're watching. We were talking about this earlier. What's going to be the difference? When will Bijan go off? And this so far has been that game. I'd say so. 20 carries, 183 yards, three touchdowns. And that is ultimately the difference in games like this. When it gets close, who's the guy that's going to take over and be the difference maker? Card stays in the game. We got movement on the right side. Christian Jones celebrating. Now, how about this? Let's get in to Christian Jones Offside, at right tackle. Number 41 defense. Five yard penalty, first down. So, one of the nicest guys you'll be. He's a teddy bear. But on the field this season, he's nasty. He's finishing blocks. He said in the past, he was simply running plays. Now he's trying to embarrass people. And the film has looked good for Jones. First and five, running behind him in a good hole from Christian Jones. And what's unbelievable, Sam, he was a soccer player for most of his life. Well, he's learning the position. He was a soccer player all, all his life. He wanted to go play soccer. And then he made the transition to football as a sophomore going into his junior year. Well, he played football. He was, he ran a triple, off, uh, a triple option offense. And so he had never really been in a three-point stance or two-point stance, all four-point stances. So Herb Hand, the offensive line coach under Tom Herman, Ask him, get down into your stance. This is Roshan Johnson, a little hesitation move to the 40 yard line. It says, get down into your stance. And Christian Jones gets into a four point stance, which you would see for an O lineman. And look how much the weight he's put on. I mean, he was always tall and lanky, but that's Christian Jones. The same 6'6, six, six, 340 Christian Jones. Herb Hand was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he also acknowledges he has come such a far away. He says, look, I know everybody's right. I played like, I can't say the word, but I played like, you know, last season. It was not a good year. And he talked, and we don't realize it when we examine his game, how raw that he still was up into this year. Yeah. When you start playing your junior season as your first full season, in football and he hadn't taken any pass sets i mean your junior season your triple option you're not drop you're not taking any pass sets so you come to college that's the first time you take a pass set he credited kyle flood the offensive coordinator and obviously the offensive line coach saying man he's teaching me about protections and about safety rotations and how to take proper pass sets and there was time when you would watch him on film and it was like what are you doing and he mentioned there was a game early in his career where the opponent brought the house on his side and he said he freaked out there were so many guys coming his way so what did he do he didn't block anybody at all but it's a I credit. like the humility man but, but it's a credit to him on how much better he's gotten because yes. he's playing football yes you go back and watch the Alabama game there were some times he was on Will Anderson one-on-one -on -one, yep. and he was finishing Will Anderson no doubt Christian Jones is a different dude and I challenge you will find anybody on this Texas team that has made a bigger leap in one year. Roshan Johnson, oh, tip your toe on the sideline. Staying in bounds. And now Texas is really starting to open this one up. Notice who they're running behind. Christian Jones, the man we're talking about. It's easy as a fan to watch a player and say, well, this guy can't play or doesn't know what he's doing. But then you get to know the player. Then you start to understand that this player hadn't played the position. He's just learning. Oh, now he's starting to get even better and better. You start saying, oh, wow, the, there could be no ceilings for yeah. a guy like this. He's got the athleticism. Oh, yeah. He's got the frame. He talked about seeing the offensive lineman doing drills and saying it was so hard for most offensive linemen. The drills for him were easy because of what he did in soccer. 
But in soccer, you want to be on your toes. Oh, yeah. He was surprised that you don't want to be on your toes on the offensive line. True. Just a, a real pleasure to talk to, a great personality. We were on Texas Game Day Final after the season opener, had an interview with him, and, and I made the comment, Christian Jones seems like a really nice guy. I, I want to play Xbox or PlayStation with this guy. And his friends had sent him the video clip, and he thought it was pretty funny. He was like, I guess I am a nice guy, huh? Well, he's turning nasty on the field. Second and goal here, card to Keelan Robinson. Keelan Robinson to the five-yard line. A little hobbled getting up. So Texas now trying to get a win, get to two and one on the season. Feel like now they've qualified that close game against Alabama and are set up to go into Big 12 play where if you can get Quinn Ewers back, you gotta feel like you have a shot in the Big 12 Conference this season. But here's the interesting thing about football. With each win, each game gets bigger and bigger. And so you, let's say you get a win in this game. Well, now you, you're going into Lubbock, which is a very, very yeah. hard place to play. I was talking with some of the coaches on this staff, and they said, man, that's one of the hardest places to play. That's Texas Tech Super Bowl when Texas comes into town. The tortillas, and the people said they got to throw more than just tortillas. Uh, on that football field. Conference play, bigger games. West Virginia, Oklahoma, bigger games. Every game matters more and more and more. And I still don't think we're at the point until October 8th where you can say, has this program truly taken the proper steps? Because it was 28 to seven against Oklahoma. Everybody's riding high. Oklahoma comes back to win that game. Right, that game is still going to be a huge barometer for this Texas program, regardless of what they do up until that point. There's a TFL. As Pachuku brings down Keelan Robinson. It's a beautiful play, I gotta say. That's a, and, and what, great play design by Jess Lett, but Kelechi Wachuku, he comes downhill. Just FYI, I mean, like he turns the tape on him, yeah. he comes downhill. That was, a, that was a great play design. Sets up a fourth and goal, and here's Burt Auburn. And Texas also has to be pleased with what Auburn has shown them so far. 26-yard attempt. Kick is up and good. Is Auburn outside a couple of bad snaps that he's had to deal with? Has been rock solid this season. It's 41-20 Texas with under five left. Sam, your old coach here, Coach Mac Brown. Congratulations on being inducted tonight into the Texas Hall of Honor. Um, there, there's no more special group, and welcome to that group, my man. You're very deserving. Uh, you were a, a great player, a better person, tremendous leader, one of the best ever, and you got many awards but the most important award in college football is the Campbell Award for being the smartest player in college football. Let me say from Sally and I we're sorry we can't be there in person but we're there in spirit. Our lives are better because you're in it and we want to wish you the best tonight. You enjoy it. You and your wonderful family enjoy this great accomplishment. Hook them horns. Well, I appreciate that coach. It's funny talk about something like the Hall of Honor and you're there to get honored and there were other 10 other inductees but I was thinking man who do I need to honor for this event I actually called coach Brown hours before the the ceremony and just thanked him and Sally and I called my defensive ends coach coach Giles and thanked him and honored him I called Jean Bryant who was the uh, academic advisor and thanked her and then got a chance to have my mom and dad in town and I honored them and so like it's cool to have an honor like this but sometimes I think, man, I want to honor the people who put me in this position to get this far. That's awesome. Awesome to see Mac and awesome to see you have that moment because that takes us back. It, it takes us back to the glory days, the heydays of Texas football when it was not just winning, but winning in a certain way. Say winning with integrity. And Mac was on the top of the list, but it was because of players like yourself that, that were on a different level dominant players but carried themselves away from the field 
and had so much more going on in their lives than the game of football itself. To me, that's what Texas football is. And I was talking with someone close to the program at halftime of this game, and I said, are you concerned? He said, no, this feels like a Matt Brown game. He <laughs> talked about the, you know, the, 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 the surprise onside, the double pass. And I asked him, what do you mean? He says, well, we come back in the second half and do what we do. And yep. so, obviously, like, shout out to Coach Brown, but this is what you're hoping to see from a Steve Sarkeesian coach team. Everybody in life goes through adversity, and football is no different. What do you do? How do you respond to that adversity? And Bijan, we saw him do it, Jade Barron. But it's not just the guys who made the big plays. It's the guys around them, the blocks that you don't see the assignment sound football that you don't see that makes the plays work. And ultimately, you're spot on there with Texas winning close games under Mac Brown as Marburger goes for the scramble for the first down. No one was better in his career at the University of Texas winning games that were one score, three point games. You think about all the clutch field goals that happened in his run was the ability to find a way, even against teams that a lot of people thought they should have blown out, right? But how good can you be on your bad day, on your worst day? And that was a sign that Sark is trying to get this program back to. And you can never take winning for granted. Yeah. You really can. And some people say, you should have blown this team out, or y'all should have beat this, team, beat this team by this much. But at the end of the day, it doesn't count more. A win is a win is a win. Well, there's a reason why the line in this game was 12, 12 and a half points. A lot of respect for UTSA and what Jeff Trailer has done. And as Sark said, classic trap game. And I really thought through the first 15 minutes of this game, Texas was in that trap. But to their credit, they found a way out of it. Now, the job that Jeff Trailer has done, unreal. He's going to keep winning, right? Winners win. You win three state titles at a place like Gilmer. You're going to keep winning. People always question, okay, can he be a head coach on the college level when he's never even been an offensive coordinator on the college level? And he told us that's overblown. Ultimately, it comes down to, can he be a leader of men? And Trailer is exactly that. That's what he is. And to the head coach point, he's 20 and 8, uh, 20 and 8 record. <laughs> and so that's the winning is happening, coach of the year. But more than that, he said, man, when this game ends, I talked to Jeff Trailer right before the game started. He said, I want to look back and say, can I be proud of what we put on this football field? Oh, yeah. And if you watch it, the triangle of toughness that he talks about, a physical brand of defense, running the ball on offense, special teams, he can be proud of the way that his team played. If it weren't for a few drops or maybe some misprotections, the game could have gone different. Think about having the ball at the one-yard line ending up with a field goal on the opening drive as Marburger gets away and gets past the 50 into Texas territory. Think about the offsides call when Texas was going for it on fourth down, a drive that led to a touchdown. A drop touchdown for UTSA, a drop fourth down conversion where the game was still in the balance. Very close to being a completely different outcome and feel of this game. This is true, but the, the, here's the bright side for UTSA. They're thinking about how do we win our conference? And yes, yes, Conference USA this year, but they're also thinking we're going to the AAC next year. We believe we can win that conference. And so when I look at UTSA, of course you want to win this game, but you can be proud of the way you played. And there's a flag on this. Proud of the way you played, proud of the way your team fought, and know that one or two or three plays could have changed the entire outcome. I think they'll be proud of this. I think they're going to be disappointed, though. Yeah. Which is a testament to where this program has, has gone because they in they just over a decade. Pass yes. interference, number 31, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And the disappointment comes from you know you could have won this game. Yeah. You know you matched up with, with the team across from you. Here's so, what, like, it's almost like you, you almost say you beat yourself. Yeah. Upcoming schedule for UTSA. Preseason picks to win the conference USA. Still the team to beat. After this game tonight here in Austin. Barberger. Close to the first down. Keaton Crawford, Jeff Bush making the stop on Dishman. And if, if this score stands as 20 points for UTSA, this will be the first time since 2011 
that the Texas defense has held their first three opponents to 20 points or less. Testament to some of the new additions to the coaching staff. Yep. The growth of the players. Pressure on Barber Hook. He's hit, and that ball floats short of the intended receiver. You think the defense is real? Have you seen enough? Because we were talking early on that they weren't getting that push at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I, I, I do think they're real. They are real, and I have seen enough. But part of it's because going to some of the practices and, and even listening to to some of the, the way that the team communicates and watching them communicate on the field. You can tell they're watching film, they're ahead of the game. So for me, that says, yes, didn't have a great first half. UTSA is a very, very good football team. But even look at now, running to the football. Marburger with a block. And a long run going sideline to sideline for Barnes, and it ends up with a stop for Michael Taft. Monte Tucker Dorsey. Big play, Big 12 play. That opener against Texas Tech, that's so critical for this Texas team. We've seen them be so close, show flashes, but just waiting to put everything all together. It seems like Steve Sarkeesian is the guy, the personality that's recruiting well, that's upgraded the talent on this roster. I mean, we heard from the Texas staff, they did not feel that they were overmatched physically by Alabama. That's a big statement on the job they have done to recruit and develop talent on this Texas roster that you can say that against the best program in America. And we heard from the UTSA staff, Jeff Trailer talked about, man, you turn the film on, this team is bigger, thicker, faster, older than when he was at this program back in 2015. And so, other coaches see it as well. 22 seconds left, third and 11 here for UTSA. Marburger pressured by Ethan Burke, the freshman to the end zone and up and out of reach of the intended receiver, and Isaiah Davis. 14, Davis. Fourth and 11. And UTSA will keep the quarterback on the field. Coming up next is Texas Game Day Final. Alex Lowe, Ryan Robinson, Michael Griffin, Fozzie Wimmicken. I'm Michael. Michael, thumbs up if you had a good evening. Okay, that's good, that's good. My guy Michael Griffin holding it down. Fourth and 11, Marburger running for his life. Still going, big hit on the play, lets it fly out of the back of the end zone. And this is gonna allow Texas to take a knee and wrap this one up and think about big 12 play. Wanna go back to the comments from Steve Sarkeesian. Talking about how big this would be to make a statement. They needed to know how powerful the game is, the psyche, trajectory of program, and to get ready for the big 12 conference opener it seems like they've checked those boxes with the performance here tonight didn't start well but finished very strong and you find a way to win you think about winning builds confidence close losses don't necessarily build <laughs> confidence and you gotta have confidence at that site not only to see viewers throwing before the game but to just be in pads on the sideline that's an indication to me that that return could be coming a lot sooner than people think. Final thoughts, Sam. Final thoughts. Impressive win by Texas to come back in the second half, but also impressive play by UTSA. That first half tells you that they are who we thought they were, the team that was 12-2 last year, that's building this triangle of toughness, this winning culture with Jeff Trailer. But at the same time, Texas says, okay, we've checked this box, it's time to move on to conference play, and so does UTSA when they go to Conference USA. Feed the beast, that's what Texas did. B. John Robinson, 20 carries, 183 yards, three touchdowns. It included the longest run of his career, 78 yards for the score. Next up, Big 12. Action against Texas Tech in Lubbock. After Texas takes down UTSA 41-20, let's kick it over to Alex Lowe. 